what is going on everybody hello hello happy sunday morning sunday evening if there's anybody already already it's monday for you well then <laughs> we have an amazing start to your week uh i am after sound here joined by foyer for a little sunday fun day we'll do some giveaways as well but uh foyer it's it's been a bit I yeah. hope you enjoyed the Thanksgiving holiday. I know you and I have talked, but not publicly here. So I hope things have been all right with you. But uh, welcome to the show. How have you been? Good. Yeah. Likewise, hope uh, here uh, Thanksgiving uh, is going well and or went well. Yep. 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 So, so just to give everyone uh, a little bit of a heads up, I know you have a time restriction or a time limit. So I appreciate you coming in to, to hop on. For yeah, a it's a good bit. I think it's almost two hours. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, just let me know. Feel free to either, yeah. you know, ping me in the chat or you can just say bye to everybody here. <laughs> just interrupt me and say bye. But I yeah. uh, appreciate that the heads up on that. So we got Stock Jockey in the house. We have Andrew Johnston. So good to see you. Luke Dice, what's happening, guys? So there's a specific topic uh, that Foyer wanted to address. And, um, you know, with the, the, kind of last minute <laughs> last minute decision to, to have that conversation today i didn't put it in in the the title but i figure we can start there and then see where the conversation goes um but that is around guilds and um one one thing you said to me uh privately is how guilds designed in splinterlands at this point in time are still very much web 2 or they they look like web 2 guilds and you'd like to see this evolve to a Web3 style of guild in the future. And I kind of want to just leave it there and allow you to explain what your vision is. And then, you know, we can take some questions from the community. Uh, and I'm sure I'll have some follow up questions on my own to, to see if we can, um, you know, f further break it down. Yeah, and I, I think the team ha has started uh, the momentum towards migrating the guild from a Web 2 to a Web 3, uh, mm -hmm. adding some of the DeFi uh, elements uh, to it. Well, one of them is the uh, SPS rewards for the uh, guild walls. Yep. So I, I think w w where it differs is um, from an investment standpoint, uh, the, the guild ownership. Um, so we own assets, we own cards, we own lands, we own nodes, we... We, we own various assets throughout, throughout the game and all of them have some kind of uh, equity return perspective. And yeah. the guild owners, most of the top guilds, um, and maybe there are exceptions and uh, I don't know the percentage uh, breakdown. Uh, essentially, um, I would say the usually there's two to three people within the guild that pays the most and contribute from a DEC perspective. They contribute the most to grow the guild. Mm -hmm. and to get it to whatever level 10 hall and things like that and across the boards to try to maximize it to a uh, tier five uh, uh, guild uh, process at least progress uh, towards that so in in doing that and in contribute, contributing their time the um, the effort to build and recruit the team members the the net result is they don't get anything there's no compensation for them and in fact uh, many of the guild leaders and founders um they're not even active. They, they don't even get a chance to play in the slot because so, sometimes they end up just giving it away to um, one of the members because there's too many slots for the uh, fray um, perspective. You mean so, too few slots for the fray? Right. That, uh, well, there, there, are, there are more members than there are frays, right? Gotcha. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So they, so in essence, uh, there are many sacrifices and within a web three format, that shouldn't be the case. And hopefully the, the team will consider tokenizing the guild and then allowing uh, partial co-ownership of the guild itself. So fractional ownership, allowing, uh, kind of like a mini, uh, DAO perspective where you can, um, you can have people contribute uh, and, and own equity and growth in the guild and get an investment return. So maybe it could be where members in order for them to join the guild, they have to buy into the, um, buy into it. Buy into uh, the guild. Yeah. Yeah. Buy into it from an equity standpoint. And if they were to leave the guild, the only way they would leave is to sell their equity to someone. So as the uh, guilds develop uh, from that perspective, every fractional ownership of the guild would represent and um, their financial interest uh, in mm -hmm. it and as they contribute towards. And then, so uh, some of the considerations would be like, um, instead of distributing everything 100% to only those who participate within the um, 
the phrase within each round of, of the um, of the guild uh, battles we could have it where the guild itself takes a percentage it could be you know arbitrarily i'm just going to say 10 percent, but yeah. it, you know guild uh, the guild itself could take that and retain it and then they can distribute it and i, I think um even the um the members who don't participate that they should get a percentage because at the end of the day they have an equity um, stake within uh, a financial mm -hmm. interest uh, they, they should get some reward in some some way in some capacity and then i think the uh, guild level itself should be um should align with the uh, ranking systems where you, right now you have like at the bronze level you, you have all these old cards and all yeah. these it, it doesn't make sense at, at that at a tier one guild to uh, to force them to and they're just trying to learn and they're facing chances are they don't they only have chaos they uh, legion cards yeah, they true. come in and uh, so I, I think it just needs to be kind of realigned and uh, things like, um, yeah, you know, the soul bound cards and uh, th things like that to, uh, to look at ways to enhance uh, the, uh, the investment uh, area. And uh, th those are, I, I think, uh, some of the, uh, some of the areas and we're just kind of brainstorming here and maybe I'll do a little bit better job and maybe I'll actually write a blog about this or something. Yeah. Like yeah. That. No, that'd be, th that'd be great. So, um, because uh, the thing is, I I, I want to make sure that we start from scratch here because you and I have had extensive just conversations on Discord via text. So I feel like you have a lot of really cool ideas here, but at the most, uh, and I want to make sure we try to present that as, as organized as we can in a conversational format. Um, but I, I agree 100% with the fact that, you know, owners of guilds right now Owners of guilds right now, there's no, you know, there's no benefit outside of, you, you don't have, you don't own the asset. And so tokenizing it is a, is a very interesting kind of uh, approach to me. And then more importantly, if you're just a member of a guild, not an officer, not, uh, even if you're an officer, right? But the idea is that, you know, one small thing here or there, or let's say the, the guild owner or one of the, the leaders or founders is having a bad day and wants to boot you they can and everything right. that you've done for that guild is essentially gone out the drain so yeah. I, I do like the idea of everybody within a guild working towards something which is which is what's happening now but for the most part it happens on good faith that like your guild leader or leaders are are going to you know set proper rules and you know be be a you know what you want in terms of leaders but if anything goes bad you don't have any ownership you don't have anything that you're working towards everything that you put towards the guild uh is not really coming back to you or you don't own that right i guess the only thing that you can take with you is or, or are your um your soulbound gladiator cards right and but, the merits and, and, yep. and, and the merits yeah but you can also now earn that without even joining a guild now obviously i think you earn it much faster Correct. if you're in a guild and at a higher level guild but you know, at, at the same time, I, I like the idea. I, there's some there's something about the Web3 model that it, it aligns incentives. It, it aligns economic incentives appropriately uh, where you can go. I don't know where, where you can go and like people will feel a sense of ownership. Right. And that's that's yep. something that's been fascinating for me. And, uh, you know, you and I have been exploring that with with certain projects that we're, we're thinking about doing. But to me, that's that's something that they can easily implement within the game. It fits both as a a great DeFi element within a web 3 or 2.5 game as well as you know it's it adds a nice DeFi element but it also adds a cool game element because it takes something that is so crucial to not just splinterlands but the guild concept isn't obviously wasn't born with splinterlands but this idea of like people banding together or banding together i should say uh, um, it's a very old concept within it, the web 2 <laughs> exactly that. yeah so but but yeah. you can take that and kind of innovate and I don't know. Again, I, I'm I'm ignorant about many of the other projects that are out in the space. I'm I'm trying to use this time to explore more, but um, you know, I, I would I would at least argue that Splinterlands would be one of the first that could implement something like this. Oh yeah, or, they're yeah they're so. they're uh, they're in a fantastic position. I think it's just a matter of uh, whether they believe in guilds or not, and they want to mm -hmm. make the uh, the investment in the the dev and uh, Nate's. Uh, a creative team and uh, things like that uh, to make it happen um, yeah I, I think um, like so if, if we extrapolate this to uh, larger um, guild organizations let's say YGG for instance 
what uh what, what did they t- uh, technically get uh, uh <clears throat> get for it mm-hmm. for buying so they so okay they, they they i think they initially made the um I don't know. Let's say arbitrarily five hundred thousand dollars. They bought into some, uh, you know, couple regions and cards and things like that mm-hmm. and assets. Okay, great. They get that, and then they form these guilds, and then they form these sub DAOs of the uh, the YGG um, uh, Prime, so to speak. And then what do those those guys get? Uh, I mean. And th- that's the reason no, why they're right. not making. So. Yeah, that, that, that's the reason. I, I think if you know, if uh, Matt and Agro wanted the larger guilds and wanted to, to come in. build more guilds to build to come in and make heavier investment into it and see value into it, I, I think they can change that. Uh, you know, and I, I like the, um, the the alliance concept too, with uh, integrating with lands, uh, you know, and, and things like that, and even the, some of the some of the traditional uh, web two uh, pieces that um, you know weird beard uh, speaks about and things like that i rather apply that to guild first versus tournament yeah. because I, I think marketing tournament uh, you have a lot of um, small gains uh, relative to mm-hmm. uh, to what a guild can actually produce in terms of a type of framework um, such as uh, uh, splinter lands and you know card card game perspective okay can, can web, you, web can two you is can Go we ahead. dig into that just a little bit more? Because yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I'm I'm bullish on tournaments, not in their current format, but what they could be in the future. Uh, but I, I'm curious to see. But I, I've always I've always felt that like brawls, or sorry, not brawls, but like guilds and tournaments, uh, both have a lot of potential. But I, I'm curious to know why you feel guilds more specifically have a a, a brighter future, in your opinion. It's order of magnitude. It's stickiness. Uh, th- there's a lot of th- there's a lot of things. So l- let's say I- I'll give you an example. A player can come in, and whether they're using uh, ghost cards, whether they're using draft mode, or they're uh, j- just a part of a- any type of uh, program that they wanted to uh, to get into, they'll execute a certain number of programs, but mm-hmm. uh, at tournaments. Uh, and then that's it. You have a winner, and you, you have a grand champion. And but with a guild, yeah, there's there's no guarantee that that individual will come and play X number. Versus guild is a consistent, repetitive thing that you come in seasons. Uh, you know, every season guilds consistently strive to you. You get married. You there, there's a progression. Yeah. True. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Sorry, and I I feel like I you were continuing a the thought there, so I want to let you get back to it. <laughs> it's it, it's okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, hold on. Let's let's just take a quick moment then to to say hi to all the folks here. So Chuni's in the house. Thank you, Chuni. Appreciate you hanging out here. Alex, I'm up. If you don't know who Foyer is, Alex, uh, I'm a little disappointed in you. We've had him. He's been he's been here chatting a couple of times. So yes, he plays Splinterlands and knows guilds relatively well. I'd say. What's up, Icy Flow? Virus in the house. Liberty guy off the grid. Good to see you. Stock jockey. 10% for the big guy. I uh, just put my alt in the guild last night. Darkest Knight going to give act. I mean, I, I have to. I walk on eggshells around Darkest Knight. I, I have to make sure he's not going to boot me, you know? <laughs> What's going on, Leandro? Good to see you here. Uh, all right. So we have some people recruiting for Immortal Beavers. Check it out if you're looking for a guild. And yes, Song of the Phoenix always has uh spots for you so virus thank you for for promoting that what's up eraser heads um okay so guilds over tournaments uh i agree with you there you mentioned alliances and we don't have any information on on what alliances actually mean i mean there's a there's a general idea but i'm curious in in your perfect scenario if you if you had the chance to kind of daydream a scenario with with yaba and the team what, what would alliances look like to you in in this kind of web three context so i uh, and th- this this kind of comes down to um land regions and around castles mm-hmm. and i i think um keeps i don't know how um how they're gonna lay it out the yeah. the, the whole framework but what, one of the potential construct is that a castle uh comprises a certain number of guilds that because the castle can either have a consolidated um one big alliance and Mm -hmm. an alliance could include x number of guilds and i I don't know what that limit is what um 
that um, deems uh, from an economic standpoint. And then it depends on the reward system and what the objective of um, this alliance uh, piece, this pact. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it, it has to be around battling the neutral land. That's one of the components. I, I would say the purpose of these alliance to have a lot of these um, guilds come together and battle some of these uh, neutral or occupied uh, lands and things like that. With uh, with the eventual boss monsters, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So there there, there can be some kind of uh, tiered progression uh, on that piece so that we can carve out. And I, I think depending on how they're going to piecemeal the economic, the DeFi component for land, that um, that may work out uh, from that standpoint. They can mm -hmm. kind of modulize uh, the, the pieces into it. And then the, you look at uh, virtually like every facet of um, the competitive landscape uh, w within uh, Splinter Lands, uh, how you develop it. Um, you can you can easily have uh, guilds uh, transcend across uh, all the framework uh, True. Yeah. When, when, you, when you're building. So like um, w w when you look at cards, for instance, right? Um, maybe you can have a an alliance set of cards where like um you can have an umbrella so let's say one one fraction of uh, ygg may have an alliance and they may be able to share the greater piece or they may be able to share um, a component of the land so there mm -hmm. may be cards and also like th this may be part of like um the construct for um, sps staking whenever they decide to uh, put that in place so yeah. when you're staking on players, you can actually stake it on the entire guild or partial or, or stake Ooh, it on the clients. That, um, that would be interesting. Yeah, so th there can be a mathematical progression where a whale can, in theory, um, maybe stake, let's say, hypothetically. And I, I have to, you know, Matt has to work out, um, Matt and um, Hardpoint, they have to work out the numbers. But essentially, they can say, okay, if it costs 100%, uh, of the SPS for the entire guild in terms of mathematics. It's just like the Christmas uh, thing they're giving up with mm -hmm. the promo. You can do 70%. So if a whale can, uh, comes by, um, he or she can stake 70% and that would cover the entire umbrella of the alliance itself. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the things like that, they can uh, work out just to Gosh, make okay. it uh, easier um, from a computation standpoint. And it, it may be um, ease some of the burdens for the, um, the validator nodes as well yeah um i you know I, I i love the complexity in the game and i feel like what you're what you're talking about here would add add so many more additional layers because i think what people want with land um just to pivot there for a quick second is yeah th that's gonna add a layer of complexity to the gameplay it's gonna add a layer of complexity to asset ownership with the nfts right that you'll be able to use for spells and items it's going to add a layer of complexity to the DeFi elements within the game with the resources and automatic or automated market makers. Um, so land in and of itself is, is going to be super complicated, which is, I think, obvious by the fact that it's been delayed for so long. Now, throwing guild alliances on top of that, or even, you know, just, just guilds in general, uh, do you ever worry about, do you ever worry about it? it being too complex for newer players and, and kind of creating different game modes. Um, and the, the reason I'm bringing this up is because I, I saw something from weird beard last night in Mav chat where he's like, land is cool. Land is going to be great. Uh, but we want to make sure that, you know, for players who come in two years from now or three years from now, there will be a way for them to play without needing to own land, for example. And that immediately made me consider, what if there's different like game modes in the future? Uh, so I'm just curious how how you would be thinking about that, or if I'm totally off the rails here. If if you're you know, with, with the complexity you just discussed, I figured this might be a good good area to yeah, share. Yeah, I, I think that that's a that's a fair um, that's a fair assessment. Uh, th this is just my fundamental belief, and what I believe that. So if you look at to make an investment, right, you want a product that has either an absolute advantage or a comparative advantage over sure. its competitors. Uh, so I, I think one of uh, Spindleland's strength and its comparative advantage is that it, it lends itself towards complexity, mm -hmm. towards a lot of computation, and towards a lot of intellectual capital. And, yeah. uh, so I, I think 
from my perspective, uh, that adds certain stickiness. Uh, yes, there's only going to be a certain number of people in the world's population that will be interested in mm -hmm. this type of um, analytical type of uh, game and analysis card game, you know, true, and true, yeah. like that. So th I, I think th there, there will be one segment. So if, if we break down and I, I think people are just kind of um, may maybe um, overly um, concerned about new sure. players and things like that. So I, I think players come into the game. Um, and I, I think part of it is that the team is focusing on the the bronze and below, or I should say even silver two level or below league, mm -hmm. where they, they, they're really not putting people in the right track, uh, per se. So I, I think from an economic standpoint, um, so I, I ultimately fundamentally believe that you have to be rewarded for your time. You, sure. you, you know, and um, you, you can say like Dwayne time and attention, right? Yeah. So you, uh, ultimately, I think us, like from a human being perspective, I, I think everyone should be fairly compensated for their uh, for their time and mm -hmm. what they contribute to the uh, economic uh, life cycle, so, so to speak, in the world. So yeah. I, I think the uh, the gaming uh, portion of what we're doing and the DeFi uh, portion of that should be uh, should be a fair represent uh, representative of that, that. So uh, ha having said that, I think so when players come in, so what what are some of the options they have for onboarding players, right? Well, one of one of the ways um, is that we buy enough cards. So you you spend uh, $600 and you play at, let's say silver two. This is, these are just hypothetical arbitrary sure. numbers. So you, you can spend $600 and you can immediately get in around silver two and be competitive at that and kind of progress and slowly mm -hmm. kind of grind, grind your way and earn cards and things like that and compound th that way. Um, the, the the other way is you just become a renter. So you're just going to say, I'm just going to be at a gold three or a silver one and silver two, wh whatever level. But it, I think it had silver two is probably the, the bottom of the economic model. So you just come in and you're just going to say, I'm just going to rent these cards. I'm just going to pay the rental. So I, I think the, the other aspect is uh, I'm just going to be partnering um, kind of like with the nifty ar arcade guys. And I, I think that what their model, it's kind of a modified scholarship uh, type mm -hmm. model where you have an intuitive understanding for card games and some of these. And so this is where I think people who come in who are playing below silver two it's just an experience uh, they're experiencing they're learning the game they're getting i i think that aspect of it the um the immersion the exposure yeah. um we can we can find a better way to uh to kind of introduce them to to that game uh format we can give them a uh, case scenario and teach them uh, you know elements too and uh, you know part of it is ghost card tournaments and things like that we can give them uh, different uh types and we can look at different types of passes, uh, however you want to carve it. Uh, but, but ultimately, that's a different, completely different onboarding path where you're, um, you have to come up with a program to kind of immerse someone in, in that aspect. The, um, the, the other ones are like players that come in. They may not really care about the experience. They just have a certain amount of disposable income or they mm -hmm. may view this game as a good investment, a solid yeah. investment. And they're just going to dump um, X number of dollars <laughs> into this game to buy the very best cards they believe they can buy, or that they're just gonna, uh, you know, be like uh, Jeff Open Cards and buy seventy-two thousand packs, and yeah. um, you know, and then slowly open or sell. You know, it's more of an investment uh, per perspective. Uh, so from yeah, and I, I would say the majority of people in this game probably fall under that banner to a certain extent. You know, uh, view, viewing it either as some kind of speculative play for future based on on what's happened uh, in the past between card sets or card card releases. So uh, oh, you, you gave a lot there. I'm trying to I, I had another thought for the initial thing that you you had said, um, but I'm blanking on it now. Sure. Yeah, okay. I think I think <laughs> it's important to modulize the onboarding, the immersion mm -hmm. experience for what what type of player you you're anticipating and what uh, what type of investor the person has a desire. Yeah, exactly. So so you're you're looking at silver as really the the lowest baseline. Silver two is probably have. yeah yeah. So the thing is, you know that bronze is essentially irrelevant. You're not going to earn 
anything significant it's there. But but this this kind of goes against what Yabo was talking about in the most recent town hall. It seemed yeah. he he wants people to view this as a game, not as something that they're going to get you know a massive ROI on right away. For example, I think he forgot why he built the game. He forgot why he built the game. Yeah. You mean meaning that he wanted people to make money from it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because you can't have peace, freedom, and prosperity, right? Mm, interesting. Okay. Right. Uh, they all require money. So, so I, I'm not going to disagree with you on that. No, because... I'm just that, that's what Aggie no, no. said. That's no, what no. Matt originally 100%, said. Hundred <laughs> percent. Like, why, why would you? Why would you create something within a web, with a Web three context to it? He's just pissed it, with all these people with ten thousand plus bots. Probably. But also, yeah. yeah, I mean, he's just frustrated. I shouldn't say pissed, maybe frustrated. Frustrated. With, uh, how to, um, uh, you know, how, how to, how to navigate uh, around that yeah. and understanding. Uh, of course, you know, throwing out soulbound is the most intuitive, easiest solution, but it's also the worst solution with significant unintended consequences. Well, and well, here, here's the thing. Part 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 of the issue is that like this this is to a certain extent a free and open market, right? The team doesn't. Team doesn't come in and set prices on cards and assets within the game. Like that's that's that's, you, that's what make gives exactly. Splinter Lands a comparative advantage, right? Exactly. But but no I, other, I no other game in the world can do, is offering uh -huh. what Splinter Lands is doing. But I have I have to imagine there's a lot of we'll just call it frustration when you when you see a lot of potential new players uh, or even actual new players coming into the game and being like, wait, if I spend X amount of dollars on a Web three game. And my ROI is this percentage point. That's not really worth it. <laughs> it's just like that number was very different, right? That number was very different a year ago, Correct. and you and you had masses coming in. And nobody was gonna expl uh, nobody was gonna complain about it at that point, right? Correct. But here we are, depths of a bear market with a crypto based yep. NFT based game, and people are talking about the ROI not being there. And yep. so, so I, I I agree with you to a certain extent that it's it's kind of um, it's kind of cherry picking the the whole like okay well now that we're in a bear market you need to look at it like a game versus like when we're not in a bear market we're not going to tell you to look at it like a game it's just like hey look at how much money you can make if you come play Splinterlands right so um, yeah I mean uh, here's the thing I'm not even trying to th throw shade because it's just like we all got caught up in the hype and FOMO last year at least most of us yep. did you know my, myself included. Uh, the idea of play to earn was so so new, and the bull market FOMO was so incredibly uh, intoxicating for many people, thinking that we'd go to 100k Bitcoin and what that would mean for all of the altcoins all around. That you know, no nobody was thinking that there would be an end to the party. Everybody everybody was thinking, you know, oh, I'm going to be able to play a game for the rest of my life. I'm going to be able to quit my job. Not, not, not add value to society. Just stay home and play a virtual game and earn enough money to uh, not not do anything else. But in theory, if you don't um, factor in SPS, mm -hmm. I think the other components, other parts of Splinterlands, allows you to make money. Oh yeah, no, for sure. The the DeFi elements within Splinterlands are are great, and this is you know I've, I've talked about it so many times about now separating out the, the player side versus the investor side, right? Like the DeFi right. elements that I take advantage of, whether that's in, investing in nodes to help secure the network or what, you know, taking advantage of the rewards really right now, but mainly the, the liquidity pools, right? That's like, none of that goes into the game where I don't consider it as part of the game. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't know if that's what you were getting at though. Yeah. And also like if, if you look at the, uh, the card in, investment uh, value, right? Um, you you can in theory recoup um, th depending on when you, when you're buying these and you know this is like I, I don't recommend uh, buying things when things go up uh, many folds and th things like that but if you were to you can still rent out the cards mm -hmm. and still make some money and depending on the cards that you, you bought and you know th this is where I think uh, investors and players need to be conscious and understanding. Um, need to have some level of financial knowledge and accounting knowledge yeah. to uh, to be able to assess so some of these um, decisions. They just can't really, if you care about making money, if you don't, you just want to have fun, you know, then it's okay. You can just uh, spend uh, out of your pool and you can play. Um, I don't think this game is kind of 
is designed like that mm -hmm. or the intent is is for uh for that um th this game is not going to be the most fun and the most exciting game and even matt at one point at one of the town halls said that you know one of the things that uh, Splinterlands can contribute to the gaming sector because they're not going to be the biggest and this is the very first time they're doing it is the DeFi element that they're going to be able to land on better than any other uh, company. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is at the end of the day, uh, at least compared with a lot of the projects that I've seen out there, the game is competent enough and ad addictive enough in terms of like it's, it's overall like gameplay style and nature that it allows it allows for the the DeFi elements around it to to thrive to a certain extent obviously you know tokens are down all across the board but i still say well, that just like, sbs because just yeah. sure just sbs yeah, yeah. dec yeah. is probably where where it should be uh yeah. considering that it should never have been 15 exits peg so you're well, right about that matt uh matt and hardpoint has to figure out how to defend the dc uh dec peg do you want to talk about that at all? Because you and I have had extensive conversations about the DEC peg, but I don't know if you want to share it's, any it's of just like the, here with the community. It's just like the reserve currency or like what uh, Terra Luna, right? Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how many billions of dollars that uh, Do Kwan um, and his team um, ha had to put up. Uh, and, you know, they they didn't make that much money from the project at the end of the day. And yeah. they, they had to put uh, put up their own, uh, li it's liquidity, right? So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, um, Splinterlands as a company, and it's all on them, they can say, yeah, the community, yeah, we the community of Wales, people can uh, definitely assist to help them in that process. But, you know, you have to kind of assume human beings, we have some selfish tendencies and some tendencies that are makes are really characteristics that traits that make us humans and so the it's all on the team to figure out how to manage that and mm -hmm. they it's just it's looking at their balance sheet it's looking at how many DEs is outstanding and how many yeah. they have to buy and how many they uh, how many will be circulating you know the faucets and the sinks uh, and uh, i'm just glad that they're recognizing the faucets right now um they, they still need to get get rid of the uh, leaderboard and some of the other um pieces but um you know they, they really just need to let uh, sps just free fall uh because they they can't fix it right now they their job one is to. Um, what, what do you mean by let SPS free fall? Are they not letting SPS free fall right now? Because it's it's it's, it's, fell, it's fallen quite a bit. I, I, I think they're striving to keep it up as as much as they can. I think they're they're putting less focus. I think as a as a company on SPS now, which is good. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I agree because I mean the the whole point with this flywheel setup with the the DEC burning, then all of their attention should be shifted over to DEC, and yeah. it. To your point, yeah, it it, se it seems like they have been. I mean, even as what when was it October, when they they put out those proposals for Rift Watchers and Nodes and DEC, obviously the community did not did not see the bigger picture on that. And I don't I don't I don't blame the community. I was one of the people that disagreed with it and voted no, right? But um, that that was that was probably more of a timing issue and maybe uh, a lack of clarity or explanation. I think it, you've you've mentioned that the team probably could have could have expanded upon a little more why this was not just important but like crucial in many ways to to transfer all these things over um yeah. but and you know again, the whales are just mad and they're just um they're just putting up a wall with the uh, rift watch and the nodes even yeah. though they even though they know that you know it's, it's just hurting the growth of the company i okay what do you mean by hurting the growth of the company with that well one is the for forcing uh you know rift watcher to not be able to um be purchased with dec that means uh, the dow can't hold and the dow can't retain so every dec that goes to the dow that means um it can't be in circulation mm -hmm. yeah. gotcha okay yeah i, I mean i am I'm, I'm for it now i i think i said this to you in in one of our our, our uh, exchanges where I was just like, yeah, if they if they put forth the proposal to um, to do Rift Watchers and DEC at PEG rather than market value, which is what I was pushing for. But if they do it, you know, if they put the, forth the proposal, I will vote yes for it now because 
I don't care anymore. And the fact that I don't care anymore is what scares me more <laughs> than anything. Because, <laughs> you know, I, I love the game. I love the project. But the fact that I'm I'm losing uh, a little bit of, of passion for like, I, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. It's just uh, the, so, fact, yeah. the fact that I, I caught myself being like, ah, you know, if they do it, whatever, I don't care. I, this is not a battle I want to fight anymore because maybe I don't want to like put that much brain power, energy and, and time into like figuring it out. So when you look at the history of uh, of investment, when people feel this way, mm -hmm. well, what does that usually signal? Close to the bottom. Yep. And, I, I, yeah. I hope so, but I don't think it is. <laughs> <laughs> but so, you know what? You, you yeah. know, you know what's funny. Um, just just while we're on the topic, and I I hope you won't mind me saying this, but uh, I'll get him to clarify next time he's on. But you know, Darkest Night is one of you know i i call him the player's player right because he's just yeah. he's in it for the game yeah uh and in a lot of previous conversations that we've had i mean he's he's like you know what i think i'm just gonna turn the bot on and i'm gonna go play some other games yep. and to me that is that is like the dagger right that is the dagger in the heart of the splinter lens like thing because it's just like he's he's exactly what you want and i know he's such a small percentage of the people but like he's somebody who spends without thinking of the cost because he enjoys playing the game and the fact that we've gotten to a point where someone like him has expressed that to me and dark sun i'm sorry if you didn't want me to say this out loud but I, it's i think it's important for the community and maybe even the team to understand that like some of your some of the most diehard players are just like they're not exiting the ecosystem but now with all the automated tools and things it's just like yeah i, I mean he's excited right he's like i'm gonna run my bot and I'm just gonna come back in six months or a year and see what uh, see see what rewards have have stacked up for me, right? And then and then we'll see, you know, um, what the next bull run eventually looks like. So I, I just I don't know. I, I I thought that was relevant to to where the conversation was heading. Yeah, I mean, even Gank, he was he was willing to sell his region. I heard, and well, he's 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 still trying to get a, a little bit of a payday on that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, when you look at the all-time high for what land was for a region, then, yeah, yeah, to what he's well, willing to accept now. This, I mean, it's not surprising for me, and I, I, I do want to say that I, I called it out to a certain extent. Um, you know, a, after the September and October hype, I was just like, the, the end of the year is going to be pretty, pretty boring, and probably even like early into next year. And so I, I just feel like we're we're feeling that right now. There's a lot of we're skepticism. Legendary airdrop cards. Uh, What's that? And we're getting chaos, legendary air. Yeah, dark. we'll we'll get those. The burning has started, and that that'll be nice. But you know, that's yeah. people were expecting land by now. People definitely were expecting Rooney by now, right, to be playable in game. Even though that's like not going to change much. It's just going to be a slight, like, uh, you know, so, uh, slight addition to the meta. But. Here's kind of the question I ask people, right? So uh, as a player, we know uh, whatever the team says, it, it's always been around two years they'll deliver it yeah so what what makes anything they say different than what they've always historically performed so if someone performs at a certain level why why are we expecting them to do it fast to do it to do any different um well isn't that our fault for like always expecting them sure. to deliver even though whatever they say from an aspirational perspective. yeah yeah i mean they, well, they, say that, they have but... given out timelines in the past that doesn't they mean that, anything that they, that they we, have we, we know sure. that <laughs> we know that, that, that that's just aspirational it's just something that they have to meet with their you know, i, I their think the expectation that. was okay you know you have your big boom you get a lot of you know uh, uh, an increase in the player base and you, you increase the size of the team to something astronomical and I, I think what's what's been disappointing is that people have seen exactly what you're saying right like sure it's two years that they it usually takes them to deliver something but when you when you increase the size of the team that much there's this implicit expectation that some of these deadlines are going to be moved up or at the very least if they're giving new deadlines they're going to hit them which again this this year has been a uh, <laughs> this this year has been disappointing in terms of like the the first roadmap i think was put out in may and you know if, if we go if we go back and look at that now uh, you know a lot of people are not going to be <laughs> very happy with what was the you ever notice like how much you can accomplish well, right uh, the last 2 hours before your vacation before you had to leave for the airport versus the, all your entire 
Time sure. Period. Yeah. I, I mean, there's, there's, there's something to be said about the last minute, right? Pareto's principle, right? So at, at the end of the day, the team, yeah, they, they could have had more people and things like that. It doesn't mean that they'll produce more or achieve more. Well, the, the problem is, is there's no deadline. Or really? at least the, de the deadlines that they've set for themselves, they weren't holding themselves to. There was no last minute for them. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I, I think we as a community just need to uh, just ignore it and just chalk it up, whatever they say, just put a two-year mark on it. Okay, well, land, land is passing the two-year mark now, but hopefully we'll get phase 0 0.5 before that, before the end of the year. Yeah, I think they're working hard at it. At it. I I think for them, they believe that 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 is going to be the marker of success. Um, where if they can get that out, then at least they've achieved something, right? And, and then they can yeah, approach twenty twenty one or twenty twenty well twenty twenty three with um, a little more flexibility. Well, when you look at someone in uh, Bribe's uh, position, he mm -hmm. he he looks at it and he looks at the the pushing it to. Um, to go live or if the patches the updates and mm -hmm. he gives he gives these updates right yeah at, at some point it's got to affect him on a personal level so he's gonna read the script he's gonna say this and it's just you know eventually it's just become monotonous it's like a repetitive mm -hmm. cycle and it'll affect him on a human level yep yep all right can we uh let's let's take a quick moment to uh catch up on some of the chat here so it looks like archangels uh is looking to recruit sky what's happening bobby good to have you here chuni saying will they devote time to making any changes right now with these guild ideas uh i don't think they're going to be doing anything with guilds now i think that's something for the future castles with keeps with bosses sky that's a good idea so crypto beaver is saying when can we get to play our rooting game hopefully hopefully by next week uh, again so Today is December 4th. Uh, December 13th is going to be the last release window that they have for 2022. After Christmas sales uh, will be in it, then do you think the prices will go up? Uh, no. Short answer. I mean, I, I don't know, but I don't think so. Uh, piss is true. Oh, wait, hold on. We're, we're... Okay, we'll, we'll catch up. We're only about 15 minutes behind. So good morning. What's going on? Gathering the magic. How about Soulbound for Browns only? Unlocking when you have... Uh... And I, it gets tricky. People are just going to find a way around that. The team does set asset prices by controlling the supply. Uh, they set they set asset, pri asset prices to a certain extent, but they can't control demand. They can right. control supply. And to their credit, um, they're not changing the supply uh, unilaterally or without, you know. So, for example, they're changing the, the chaos agent supply now, but that was, that was put up for a DAO vote. And I think it's been shown with the rift watchers for dec and notes for dec that the community if pissed off enough or if if they really want to disagree with the team can turn it down brandon's here what's going on brandon always looking at his game first that is the foundation to for for all levels of engagement take the term play to earn out back and shoot it i i mean i again that's if you if you've been watching this content you've seen me pivot more towards that um and again, I, I'm not saying that you can't invest in this and it's not a good investment, but this is not, this is a gaming channel, not an investment channel. So I agree with you on that. So what is the best card to own to win in bronze? I don't know, probably, isn't Lamacron still good down there? Neutrals, I see got a point. What's up, what's happening, Butters? Apathy equals capitulation? No, I think, I don't know. Would you say apathy or extreme fear? The investors tend to look at it as fear, right? Fear and greed index. Mm, okay. There, there's actually a tracker for a fear and greed index and it fluctuates. I was, I was more fearful. Yeah. A month ago. Fear is the driver. Yeah. I mean, yeah. now, now it's just apathy. Cause I'm like, I have confidence that the team is going to continue on. I, I didn't, again, like a month ago or whenever it was, I, I didn't know how far the FTX contagion would spread. Um, and so, but now it's just like, uh, yeah. The game, they're, they're working. <laughs> so still against Rift Watch for DEC. That wouldn't allow the DAO to grow. SPS has an upside potential. DEC doesn't. Well, they just buy the SPS with the DEC. When DEC is back at peg, yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, we're not really using the DAO right now for anything. So AFS, less passionate, bottom here. Oh, is that is that for me? 
AFS is after sound. I think this so. upside is upon on the flywheel activation. <clears throat> I think we'll get I think we'll get that eventually. <laughs> I just don't <laughs> think it's gonna happen anytime soon unless they take drastic measures, which I you know, I'll talk about the DEC bonds. I don't know if you want to comment on why you think they're a bad idea. Uh, maybe from an accounting and maybe um, you know that's okay. All right, we'll we'll leave it yeah. there. So I just want Spring Splinter Fest two in Vegas. Ugh, we'll, we'll see. I don't know. That'd be it'd be nice if they do another Splinter Fest then. But uh, I wonder how long till we get the promo cards for the Christmas sale. I think if they, if these promo cards come any later than January thirty first, I mean people are gonna riot. <laughs> That's that's giving them a full month after the sale, more than a month after the sale ends. <clears throat> Someone asked if the team's crypto reserves are in USDT. Uh, all right, I mean, that's very... I, I don't think they explicitly um, define uh, define USDT or USDC. Yeah, yeah. Alex, you're 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 like asking the wrong group here. I mean, you can easily yeah. just go in and put it into the town hall questions. Uh, who knew land could be this hard when Meta sank billions on their virtual world? Uh, that should be an indication when uh, Mark Zuckerberg uh, said he's going to spend hundreds of billions of dollars. Yeah, that uh, should be, indicate how long, how hard it is when you have um, ten plus thousand developers working on it. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, the idea that people feel they'll be able to walk around their land and like see Pretoria in VR. Um, yeah. um at, uh maybe maybe 2030 i think we need two more bull runs <laughs> two more bull runs and the team would have to do really really well so boy are you still looking for an announcement about a capital injection to make further investment decisions for uh oh uh in terms of uh splinter lands no i i think there's opportunities like you can um you can buy some cards there's good deals mm -hmm. uh, good, good deals on rentals so you just pick and choose and then when the ec falls below you know 70 percent of peg or something it's a good deal because um the team will be incentivized to uh, move it back up yeah i i agree with that i i think uh they're probably referencing a conversation we had a while back with, yeah you know like maybe waiting to see un until they get that capital injection um if there's like a safety risk there or a bankruptcy risk but i i don't i don't know i, I don't think that I don't, i'm as worried I don't, about that um, right yeah I, I don't think so um uh, yeah i don't i think it's uh, relatively low because they're um all the assets are held within aws so mm -hmm. as long as they pay the monthly fee yeah it should be fine makes sense all right so alex is saying i just got chaos packs on the high market for a dollar 45. oh yeah. how the mighty have fallen yep they definitely set price when they offer a message discount with bonuses that's why they fall so hard on secondary market okay butters you're right you and uh yep. you and i see flow to a certain extent i will not disagree with uh, if the term and vehicle bond is a problem think of it like a dc gift card that's what i said that's what i said <laughs> it's just from an accounting perspective it gets complicated they think of it from the team's perspective not not from our end sure sure yeah, so if it makes it hard for the team to do it, then if it's not a win for the team, they're not going to yeah. do it. Yeah. Well, the fact that we haven't heard anything else about it since, I mean, I, I think Matt is reconsidering it. I, I know from a hard. revenue recognition, um, it, can, it can be tricky. It can be tricky. Not yeah. impossible, though. I don't know. Star, <laughs> Starbucks, uh, Starbucks has one of the largest uh, gift card programs uh, out there. And yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to comment on it, but people can do their own research gotcha okay yeah uh alex said, i wasn't asking i was telling all right somebody asked well what what did they say what was the response or maybe we'll hear it tomorrow uh just play and enjoy the game get involved in guild brawls and tournaments and watch out for an exciting 2023 there you go there you go it's a good way to look at it i, I would yep. probably change that to 2024 but <laughs> maybe that's just me yeah, uh, you're just looking for the having <laughs> I'm just looking for the having. I, I, not even no, you know, not even the having. But uh, I was just listening to um, I don't know podcast today about how they. I mean, we're hoping to reduce the interest rate hikes, right? But not actually stop them. Cor I think uh, that, correct. I, I think the general market sentiment is to to have them stop by like mid 2023. But even then, 
that's not that's not a pivot, right? Stopping just kind of will markets will be happy, but I don't, I don't I think, think they reduce it. Just yet. I, I believe when they reduce it, the Nasdaq will probably view it as a pivot. Uh, as a pivot, okay. Yeah. As, lo as long as inflation doesn't tick up again. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you look at uh, so the, the, it seems like the world runs in um, four year cycles. Mm -hmm. You know, it's um, a, a lot of things run in four year cycles, including the Nasdaq that does it the same too. They run in four year cycles. So like the if you look at the uh, the Nasdaq alignment and the uh, Bitcoin and things like that, um, I think uh, uh, Satoshi has uh, lucked out on or he did it intentionally where he created the uh, the four and he's he done his research uh, within his nine page uh, paper he's he's actually put a lot of thought into into the mm -hmm. um, the, the whole uh, four year cycle but uh, you know a lot of things in the world not just financial but you know crops and food and, uh, and the world cup yep olympics, <laughs> and, and the olympics yep, <laughs> yep a, a lot of things run in four year cycles yeah true yeah um okay let me just give a, a quick thought here that, that popped up because of this. So I don't I don't think that we have to wait until the halving or the impacts of the halving. Because I don't again, I don't I don't think the next bull run, like Bitcoin bull run, will be until 2025, actually. Because if you just look at it traditionally, that bull run starts or, or peaks, I should say, within 12 to 18 months after the halving. So that's happening, I think, April or May of 2024. So we probably would see 2025 being similar to 2021. But the cool thing was, um, I think it was summer of 2020, they called it DeFi summer, where you had all of these DeFi projects pop off. Bitcoin made it up to, I don't know where where it was at, but Bitcoin Bitcoin wasn't in the gutter, which, and the, the, the market was doing pretty well, which allowed, um, which allowed a lot of these projects to really take off. So I wouldn't be surprised if we get a, metaverse or gaming summer similar that is somewhat decoupled or decorrelated from from bitcoin where as long as bitcoin isn't at risk and isn't you know once we flush out a lot of the leverage i don't know if that's going to be 2023 it could be 2024 but it could make for an interesting again and, and it doesn't even need to be summer but it could just make for an interesting run where bitcoin stays somewhat stable but you see an entire category move move forward or maybe certain projects within a category category move forward yeah, it's it's hard to decouple from uh, Bitcoin because everything is priced in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's one of the things the the Bitcoin uh, folks or the maximists uh, they they did right. They uh, you know it's like the U.S. reserve currency. Mm -hmm. You get it, and it becomes dependent on it. It's also a crutch, and it takes a lot to move away from it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. All right, so I see people saying they said they consider crypto as reserves, uh, but it was various cryptocurrencies. Oh, they don't consider. Yep. So Brian's asking any comment on the Xmas CL pack sale. Two hand packs are a dollar. Oh, second hand packs are a dollar fifty right now, and looks like it disappoints the pre-sale buyers a lot. Uh, yeah, that sucks. I like. I think one of the. I think one of the the most damaging things that will probably happen is there will be a lot of there'll be a lot of hype and fomo reduction when it comes to pre-sales which could take a lot of wind out of the sales in the future i mean I, for example rift watch was the only one that i ate into uh who is it alex is calling me out as like fomoing into everything but i think i proved him wrong by saying that i don't know you you, you bought a few packs here and there and the nodes and stuff <laughs> i i so i ate here's the thing i aped yeah. into the nodes when tranche one was ending, I did not buy a single node during the presale. Oh, so, correct. You, you so, bought it when the vouchers. Exactly. And yeah. so like when it comes to like rebellion, for example, I mean, I'll tell you right now that I'm not, I'm not going to be trying to design a summoner. I, I like the, the promo card might be cool, but it's like, I all, I already have a competent level, you know, gold slash diamond deck. And so I don't I don't need to ape into rebellion the way that I did with with chaos agent. So I'm not saying that I'm going to sit on the sidelines, but I'm not going to be going heavy into it. And I'm sure that I'm not the only one. It makes it hard when you have to use SPS to buy Rift Watcher. <laughs> well, there's 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 uh, your thing to get the easy back to peg, right? Yeah. It's infinitely hard. Uh, yeah. I, I don't maybe maybe our um, our viewers uh, may disagree on that. 
but I, I find it extremely hard for me to to use SPS to buy Rift Watcher. That's why I don't have any. But here's the thing. If it was in DEC, what would you do? I would just buy it just like I would buy Chaos Legion packs. When I accumulate enough, I would just buy it. Okay, so fair enough. But that's because DEC is below peg right now. But at a certain point, no, if DEC was above would peg, would you buy it. SPS and then burn yeah. it? Okay. No, well, that, I, I, mean, that's I, I wouldn't burn SPS. But I... Well, it, it depends on what I guess the DEC value is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, DEC on land improvements are set to burn anyway. And if these pre-purchases can only be used on burn applications, it shouldn't touch the company's books. Brandon, that's that's what I said. But I don't know. Foyer, Foyer, I think has a it's more a revenue recognition. Yeah. Yeah. As an account. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, I was I was of the same mindset, but all right. The the sale they sales will further lower car prices below burn value, leading to burning and DEC inflation. I can't wait for CL to be gone. I can't wait for CL to be even more in the gutter because then I can start maxing out my deck. State of survival, what's going on? I'm thinking the mini series packs have a lot more investability compared to the main releases. Ah, oh sure. yeah, absolutely. The um, the Rift Watcher, there's much smaller in circulation. They'll have a better return long term. Yeah. I don't see. I, I'm I'm just avoiding any kind of like investment. <laughs> no, I mean it's, uh, numerically, it, it makes sense. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I I haven't even checked out Splinter Forge yet. Have you played it, Foyer? No, I I watched a, a video on it. It, it. it looks good. I um, who, who made a video? I, I can't remember. I, uh, was it content creator or was it them, the team? Either way, I'll find. I'll just because I, I, yeah, I want to watch it now. I, I, I watched them, um, and it, it it looks. I I think it looks a little bit slow, but you know it's it's um, beta, right? Yeah. So the, yeah. I I think it's a tokenomics. Uh, it, it looks really good, and I I think it's one of another uh, ex exemplary uh, example of a, a flywheel addition to the Splinterlands so uh, wheel. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I'm all for that. I mean, Bitcoin Maximi says, "Oh, there's a new Forge token." Uh, <laughs> but eh, we'll see. yeah, I, I'm not. Here's the thing: I'm not against. I'm not against tokens. It's just. I think there's too many. I mean, I, I think there's too many too, and I like. I I would love for there to be a game designed that is Splinterlands adjacent or using Splinterlands assets that can use Splinterlands tokens as well. Um, but here's the thing. It's just like that, you know, the funding has to come from somewhere. Sure. I think they sold packs, so that's great. And I'm not, I'm not throwing shade at Splinter Forge. Uh, literally every project does this. They launch a token, but it's like, I don't know. So, you you know, one of the um, big, uh, biggest fundamental problems with having all these uh, so, uh, circulation and all, all these uh, numerous tokens floating around there, it's defending the value. When you have so many, how do you defend their value? Exactly. Well, and, and and sometimes you might have competing interests and ultimately like when when liquidity gets sucked out of the markets, I mean, they're all just going to dump like they did. It, part, part of the reason that people say Bitcoin didn't hit 100K this past cycle, whether you believe stock the flow or not, um, it's like so much of it went into all the tokens that were being printed. Um, you know, a lot of the value that people would have put into something like Bitcoin went into Luna or went into Celsius's token or FTT. So, and you know. it's one of Bitcoin's problem. It's uh, they they're the one. It's their problem. They cause it. They they decided to peg with everyone. That's not Bitcoin's problem. Bitcoin is the solution. No. <laughs> <laughs> no bitcoin yeah, is the solution yeah, i don't yeah, i'm not i'm not one of those people so, that thinks that bitcoin fixes everything but no uh, bitcoin doesn't fix everything and and the network effect is a um is a fantastic thesis in terms of mm -hmm. uh, analyzing the pros and cons of uh, bitcoin the growth and the value true yeah uh, at some point uh human common sense will ha have to kick in and say that uh, you know i'm not going to pay above this amount because that wasn't the intent of it is to for it to uh, push up to a certain value it, yeah. it'll hit a wall it'll it'll constantly it's it, yeah. it will but do you think it, it's hit that wall now i don't know i i think the um well, when you look at it there's a little over 500 million people uh, our accounts in the world mm -hmm. that have some kind of crypto uh, in it 
So when you look at the world's population, let's say roughly eight eight billion and things like that, and then you look at the unbanked people and how many people can reach it, you know, you it's the, the network effect at, at some point. Uh, it's it's like the the Romans, right? They um, mm -hmm. they have to shave their coins. <laughs> it's, yeah, well, it's, you know, I, you know, I I don't disagree on, on that aspect, and I don't I don't think that you know. People say Bitcoin's going to infinity because fiats are going to zero. I, I think that's a little extreme. I can understand the argument. I just don't know that I necessarily agree with it. But I agree with you saying that it's going to go to a wall. It's just I think that wall is going to be a lot higher. And, uh, you know, if you just look at the market cap of gold, for example, that would mean a five it was a five hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin. Yeah, so, I don't I, I appreciate people wanting to compare Bitcoin uh, from a a storage of wealth and a gold comparison. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think it makes sense to compare. Really? Okay. It's, um, it, it's like, uh, you know, it's like comparing the, um, the, the web to radio, right? It's mm -hmm. comparing TV. To, uh, there isn't really a uh, fair comparison. Well, then the work effect is completely different. Well, so, so here's the thing, right? Like if, if Bitcoin is actually gold 2.0, then, which it sounds like what you're saying, right? Because the technology I don't is know. different. It, it wasn't yeah. in the nine-page uh, paper that Satoshi wrote. So you're, you're okay. That. You're you're saying you're saying that uh, Bitcoin could potentially be like a <laughs> a Betamax and not Netflix streaming. Could kind be. Of. <laughs> could very uh, well be. I think you answered Chuni's question here already. Store value versus a vehicle of transaction. Well, the nine-page paper says it's a vehicle of transaction. Transacting, yeah. Um, the store value was just uh, someone's creative way of pitching um, Bitcoin and mm -hmm. pushed it up. Yeah, I, I remember jumping into crypto in 2017 and it was very much uh, the the sentiment then was very much this is going to be the transaction currency of the future. Uh, Alex, you yes, I see that POBE BTC pool that gives you BTC as rewards. No, where is this? I want BTC rewards. All right, so DeFi will be owned by the banks after all regulation coming given FTX event. Banks always wanted to own DeFi. Yeah, maybe. Did someone say, uh, oh, sh oh, sorry, go ahead. You want? Oh, uh, yeah, I think um, the financial uh, institution will own a large portion of DeFi. I believe the decentralization component like Uniswap and things like that. I don't know how regulation uh, will affect them or conversations around ethereum and things mm -hmm. like that yeah so that's that's where i, I think from a legal quantum merit and positioning perspective I, I think a lawmakers struggle a lot and that's one of the reasons why they haven't put their uh feet into it uh, mm -hmm. i i just think it's just this, yeah this there's still a lot there did yeah. someone say oceanus they did uh, i think right or no that was me well, I mean, I, I don't know if there I don't know if that's a that's a reminder of what I did with those shots a while back. <laughs> sure, maybe. You, you uh, do have a gold one now. <laughs> I do have a gold one, and you know, I won another gold one recently. <laughs> and I wanted to sell it immediately for 30 bucks. And I was like, ah, you know what? I'm just I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put it in the corner here with the other one. And if I get a third, oh no, I need two more in order to max out a gold, but I'm not yeah. gonna buy it. So three hundred forty thousand. Oh, oh, was there another major pack purchase? A little bit. There might. Have there been. was a burn, uh, overnight burn, and then you have a little bit of a purchase. Yeah, hold on. Let me just see something here. We were at what six hundred? So, oh no, never mind. There wasn't. It was. Just, it's just the burn. I don't yeah. think anybody bought yet. Now someone said fifty dollars Oshanis. Oh, I don't think we're gonna get fifty dollars Oshanis for a while. Uh, Alex, I think I already shut you down on this. Um, I think I gave you more than enough examples of me not aping into pre-sales. But uh, if you want to still believe that, go ahead. All right, that Oshana's reaction was a uh, classic after some moment for sure. Wait, what are we talking about here? The Oshana's reaction. All right, I have the SPS. I'm not buying refresh because SPS is so low. With DEC, I buy individual cards, not packs. At yep. least for me. See, here's the, here's, here's the problem, though. Buying Rift Watchers with the SPS that you are holding is just shifting around assets within the game, right? Like if you actually wanted to buy Rift Watchers at five dollars a pop, then it shouldn't matter what the price of SPS is because you would just bring in outside capital to buy that or buy with something else. 
but well if you're using outside capital then yeah that's a different completely different that we're, we're talking about free sps here <laughs> yeah yeah we're, we're talking about the ones we get no, the, the winnings the and earnings yeah 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 um, all right, so I purchased more Red Watch packs with DEC on the non card market than purchased after pre sale by a shop. Agreeing for it, Red Watch packs in DEC equals more packs sold. I, I won't disagree with that. I mean, um, so for you, if willing, after sound can put us in touch. Very curious to understand revenue recognized for in game feature. Does Blizzard have a record have to record discounts? Interesting, okay. Uh, yeah, for um, uh, yes, I do yeah, from an accounting perspective. Gotcha, okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll ask you afterwards for you if you want to be put in touch. So anyone who makes a Jason game with their own token is suspect. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure somebody said that about Splinterlands four years ago. <laughs> a lot of tokens. There are a lot of tokens. Yeah. I would rather lower the price of Rift Watcher packs uh, by $1 than accept DEC. I mean, that's an option too. But that would piss off a lot of people who bought it at five bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Without and solving the demand issue <laughs> for, for DEC peg. Yeah. After Sound has an ideal number of DEC printed correlated with a daily transaction. Does Foy have a number towards DEC supply? I don't think that's an ideal number. I was just saying that if we do 50, was it like $50,000 worth of volume on the market on average? Um, that comes out to what 50 million DC being transacted, but there's still a lot more DEC that's needed overall within the ecosystem. So, yeah, ultimately, I, I think the team just has to defend the DEC peg on a daily basis. Uh, so far, they just pick pick and choose opportunities when to defend it to push it up. Yeah, they're not taking a proactive a daily approach like an economist would. Agreed. Um, yeah, they're not, they're not applying uh, aggressive, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, macro uh, perspective to it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Steamy Lucas is asking for a Fortnite skin. Uh, is there a new Fortnite chapter out? I saw something trending on Twitter. I need to jump back in there, but not on this channel. That'll be on Twitch. So meet me there, Lucas. Maybe he can use his free uh, Amazon thing to subscribe to your uh, Twitch. Oh yeah, that too. I need I need to start streaming on Twitch again. That that was the goal to do to do more uh, of exploring other games on Twitch. It's just I'm lazy, and then I blame it on not having the time. All right, so they upgraded the graphics a lot. No, oh, so there's a new season. Uh, they upgraded the graphics a lot. I have not played. Can you give me a skin, Alex Toro? No, bro. Okay. <laughs> All right. You guys can talk amongst yourself. Uh, every day they burn 30k. No, every day they burn 25k unless that yeah, changed. 25. What's up, Stever? Good to see you here. You started during my show. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, my bad. Steve in the house. Yeah, late because I took a break after my stream. You know, see, tell me you want a duel on Fortnite. <laughs> 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 I've been selling most of my GLX to get Rift Packs and Nightmare Packs. Nice. I need to sell my Nightmare Packs, but I'm waiting for the price to go up a little bit. You not staking GLX, Steve? Staking GLX is overrated. You see Bulldog's video on staking GLX for a year, a thousand to fifty five hundred just by restaking. Yeah. Um I, I again for people who are wondering, I have purposely not made any GLX content because I, I just I just don't want to be that guy who is like, oh, look at GLX, you know, uh, look look at this opportunity here. And then if the market dumps, I, I'd rather I'd rather not be that guy. But I'm not saying that Bulldog is wrong. Uh, I've just seen a lot of other, not even Splinterlands content creators, but just in general, you hype something up and then, I don't, <laughs> and then the time preference just, for that changes, right? Yeah, it's just my personal gut on that. I I think the Golds game is not going to be as successful, but if they were, if Splinterlands can add another card sports type game to it mm -hmm. that's more recognizable or universally accepted, I think they can... So where you're holding the GLX long-term could eventually be profitable. Yeah, I mean, I am I was doing 50-50 for a while. Um, and now I'm just like, it's, it's lower, so I'm just restaking it. But I, di I did pull some out for my for my uh, ice cream money. But I don't, it, like, it's just, it's just free money that's being printed out of thin air. <laughs> like, here's the end. Yet, yet another token that uh, has yeah. only speculative value. It doesn't even have a game associated with it yet. So if I'm getting it for free, 
you can very well bet that I'm going to turn that into something real, whether that's US dollars or, in my opinion, Bitcoin. But yeah, um, not 10 years, 15 years from now, I, I don't know how many of these games will even be around because uh, these tokens can't be defended, their value. Yeah, well. You know, unless you buy something like Gala, the company itself, uh, mm -hmm. or a representation of the company itself. Yeah. Well, I, I think there's a lot of confidence in the Splinterlands team because they've they've been through this before. But what's what's funny is I I don't buy that as an argument, and I have nothing but love for the Splinterlands team, and I think that they're doing you know what what they can to ensure their their survival. But it's like, oh, <laughs> you've been shot twice. That means if you get shot a third time, you can survive it because you have experience like living through that and it's like no it's just like every bear market can be different every like every you know cycle can be incredibly different and more difficult and i would say that this is probably the most difficult cycle that that's ever existed because the macro was down versus the last two bear markets for crypto so. yeah and also we can say that the technology for um for golds will be better than the technology for i, I think so too yeah. i mean i disagree with you on the fact i, I think goals will be a I don't know i don't know what you would define as a success but if the gameplay is as uh, much of an addictive loop as splinterlands again i will it is it going to pull in you know 50 million soccer fans around the world probably not but look at look at how robust the splinterlands ecosystem is with what five to ten thousand real players and a few whales right so well, we have bots we have a hundred thousand bots sure but but that's that's my point if if there's an opportunity for for botting within that uh, oh there has to be this is splinter lens yeah so yeah, so or that, the bots are the non uh, the npc that's <laughs> a good way to put it yeah um i i guess the point that i was making is uh you know it, it doesn't require that large of a community for the the e economy around the game to be robust enough to to survive and, and have third party oh. things built yeah absolutely they i i just don't know how how much it'll outgrow splint the lands to get mm -hmm. uh, the sp you know it'll i think uh glx will probably um do better than sps from a from a value uh, you know if it's you're equating token for token yeah yeah um well, because the tokenomics for that is way better. It's it's much closer to the flywheel, also, because yes. there's no yeah. there's no massive amount of GLUSD. Yes. So. Yep. Um, and but uh, the, how they're the, printing the vouchers and all that. Their yeah. token is way better than our voucher. But the the other thing too is they are. Um, it, it it remains to be seen what the actual volume for GLUSD, the volume and demand for GLUSD will be. Because uh, I mean that's the only thing that's going to kick off the flywheel, and I don't, I don't know that you know. Sure, initially there's going to be a pump when, like, let's say the game goes live, and in order to rent cards, for example, you will need GLUSD to transact. So you're going to see this pump, but I I don't think that that would be like, uh, up only pump forever, right? Like at some point we're going to reach an equilibrium where there's enough GLUSD in the system, and if they don't find mechanisms to burn that GLUSD then eventually it'll turn into DEC where it'll be below its peg. Yeah, so I, I think they're starting from scratch and I hope that uh, Matt and Hardpoint have a better experience at managing the peg yeah. for, uh, for, that, for that token. So they don't have to go through, you know, DEC had over a year and a half or two years of just basically being out there in the wild with no control. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. true. So it's it's been it's been circulating for such a long time versus the the gold piece um, the uh, their their token will be a lot more under control. So from from a token standpoint, uh, I have way more confidence in that than I have in Splinterlands. Yeah, yeah, but, but the, are you there, there will be what's that? Are you buying? Uh, well, I mean, I, I get the ones that I get from the airdrops to stake. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, so I mean, same for me. I I think I might have bought uh, I don't know twenty dollars worth when it was two cents or something, I, I, whatever it was. But uh, once once it once it kicked off, I was like, oh no, sell. Time to sell. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been restaking it and just uh, see what happens. Yeah. Well, that's and that's that's what I'm doing now. I'm taking whatever I earn for free from staking and then the airdrops and then just rolling with that. 
Yeah. Uh, I think we answered that question for you, Chuni. Seems like GLX is much closer to its intended flywheel. I stake 25% only, but guys, I didn't sell SPS in a tank. Yeah. I wish I had sold SPS when it was a dollar. Uh, even when GLX tanks, the oh, GLGT token is what you want, and staking it is the only way to get it. Again, why would why do we want it? Gather the magic. I mean, sure, if it's going to be twelve cents like vouchers, then that's more free money. <laughs> Sell GLX for SPS to get more GLX. I that that's not the a bad game will, from a tokenomics standpoint. I believe the game will be further ahead light years ahead of splinter lands yeah which makes me wonder why you're not aping into it because i'm kind of stuck in splinter lands <laughs> do you make more glx with sps or through staking glx right now probably through staking glx because it's like yeah. a nine or eight hundred percent apr yeah yeah um but here's the thing if you're looking for liquidity because i was thinking through this i was just like okay you could you could take the percentage staking from sps right and earn more that way what's your downside risk short short to midterm i think your downside risk is less with something like sps than something like glx but what do i know i think iris said he's going to be interviewed on wired magazine in the near future in map chat i mean that's awesome i don't i don't read wired magazine <laughs> I, I think what, once i figure out the uh, the way the card system works within the gold game the, currently mm -hmm. i i just don't know how the cards uh, system work and how building stadiums and yeah i i'm, I'm gonna wait for more information yeah, i'm assuming so he's gonna follow I, something similar to I, ideally i would i would like to dump all, all my splinterlands asset outside of sps i would like to just sell everything and move it over to the the gold but when oh, i think really out. okay yeah that, that's my long-term goal let's do it I, I'm waiting to figure it out. I I just don't have a feel for either way how the cards with intuitive would work and things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, because I I think um, I, I like to hold the SPS because you, you get airdrops from future games yeah. that they develop. Yeah. But the the larger return will be uh, for the newer games that comes out, the newer iteration. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Yeah. So hopefully they can launch something else there. Chuni, let me let me rephrase this for you. Uh, I mean, I think it's great that he's going to chat on Wired Magazine. I don't know if you're expecting something from that, but uh, you know, in a bear market, I don't think people are going to look at a Wired Magazine interview and ape into a game. So the exposure is great, but uh, my expectations are just low in general right now. But you know, Aggie is the the chief FOMO officer, so he does a phenomenal job. Uh, you get him in front of a lot of people, and you never know. Yep. Uh, which is more, I don't know, stake would be more. I think GLX has better tokenomics. Yep. Don't disagree with you. Bots for the win. <laughs> That's my point to turn GLX into SPS. You have to pay so many fees. Then stake SPS. What fees do you have to pay? Or just, It's just like that 0.25% fee of tribal mix. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't think the fees are really that much of a hit. Yeah, I, I agree with that. So Brant said, perhaps you want this offline, but curious if DC coupon price is revenue, which is burned in exchange for a coupon, what future delivery is that revenue reconciled against? Well, it would be, uh, I guess, uh, let's see here. So what, what are they exchanging the coupon for? Uh, I mean, I'm assuming something like land or guilds in the future. So if if it's com if it's coming from that right, it's a it's a sink. But then you, you have to look at uh, where where it would be offset, right? So it's debits mm -hmm. and credits. So you have to look at the offset. So without knowing uh, the the end, but if you're if you're just taking because you, what you're doing offering a coupon is debt to the company, it's liability. So what you're saying is you buy the present value at let's say 100 DEC, but you, you have promissory uh, IOU note that you're gonna get 20% more, 50% more, whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. So debt to the company. So when it gets uh, gets executed, that's balance sheet debt. And from what I understand, Matt and Aggie, they don't like debt. I, I just feel like if the DECs burn though, <sighs> It doesn't feel like it should be hitting the company books like at all. But, but what, where is it coming from, though? What do you mean? Well, so, uh, so you, you're you're saying that from a player perspective, yeah, if you go and you apply it to a guild or land or whatever, it gets burnt, right? But the incremental uh, up 
the percentage upside. So the additional 20%, whatever the promissory piece is, right? Where is that coming from? I don't know. It has I know, to be. I know you're going to say the company, right? It has to be. But the, unless the player that comes up with it, which is in that case, is not a good deal. It, it, it has to be like a, a kind of a matching uh, fund type. So a player puts it up, the company puts up the rest as a promissory note, which is debt. Well, here's, okay, but here's the thing. What um, does the company actually need to? Does the company actually need to front that? Right? Do they actually need they to provide? To, that? They have to accrue it on their balance sheet. It's it's recognized debt. But why? But here's the thing. Why not just design land in a way where it can take DEC or a DEC bond token? Right. Yeah. Because that then then it's not like essentially what you're doing is offering a discount for the DEC it's bond. That's what Enron does. <laughs> <laughs> it's what uh, SBF does, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Just give me more FTT. You can write it off. <laughs> I don't, okay, I don't know that. Well, I, Brandon's a lot smarter than me, so I would love to. I would love for him to yeah. dig into this a little bit more with you. So, yeah. Uh, but I do. I do it because I rather have SPS than GLX. All right, before the flywheel, this flywheel idea, DEC was never supposed to be at peg. There's always supposed to be a way to get discount on packs. That is true. What Steve, uh, Steve is saying. This idea of DC peg is now only when the minting stopped and SPS burn was added. Yeah, I mean they they changed the tokenomics drastically yeah, for he's, both he's tokens. For both tokens, um, in the time that I've been here. You know what's crazy? They changed the white paper of for SPS less than a year um less than a year after the white paper was out and without a governance vote because this sps burning proposal was never put up for a vote governance wasn't around then right that should have been a red flag for me <laughs> uh i thought they always had a soft tag yeah the magic i just dm'd you or at least i think that's you cool cool got it Chuny. what's up bilson good to see you here Boy, how long have you been in the game it's probably January of 2021, I guess. So do you see that goes into buildings just burn, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, that's my thought too, but there's... Yep. I, foyer, there's got to be a way that it can be designed that it doesn't hit the books, right? Or is it all like is it always going to be... I mean, like if the team sells a token... From a US gap perspective, you're supposed to cap for it, but hey, yeah. you know... Uh, this is Splinter Lands and this is crypto. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we, we, uh, we don't really. Uh, we're just going to have some funny math here to get the economy back working and trust in the good faith of everyone <laughs> involved. I mean, maybe there's crypto accounting, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm sure you know, uh, uh, some someone smarter than me has figured out crypto accounting. Sure, sure. Uh, why don't all assets in SPL sell for all tokens in the game? I think they want to drive all of the value towards DEC with that SPL. They have different use case. It's a problem that land upgrades are not defined. I mean, they're not defined, but I think we we are all assuming the same thing that it's going to be through a combination of, or it's going to require DEC. I think people are thinking and burning that DEC, but. To your point, uh, that's not actually confirmed or set in stone yet. Yeah, they haven't detailed the levels and all yeah. the stuff. Um, how many cards uh, you can uh, put on it to support it and things like that. Yeah, and it, that summoner. <laughs> it's it's stuff like that that's like frustrating because uh, you know one of the one of the biggest things recently, and this doesn't affect me because I I'm not at that level yet. But for example. On a town hall, they talk about vouchers being used for um, vouchers being used for was it the the, the potions? Oh no, bloodstones Blood and power stone, yeah. stones, right? Mm -hmm. um, so 
How many people went out and bought Bloodstones and Power Stones because they knew that they would want to use it? Only to get a proposal a month later or two months later that is, hey, we're going to swap, switch this to DEC, right? So like, again, I wasn't affected, but I, I'm I'm assuming there's a non-zero chance that somebody was affected, right? Went out and bought vouchers at whatever value. Um, oh, yeah. Because they wanted to use them, right? Not, not even yeah. as like an investment flip. It's just like, I'm going to buy vouchers at 50 cents or whatever it was at the time. And then they switched it and then vouchers literally had no use case anymore so they've now dropped to like what 12 cents and so so the value of the vouchers has dropped for anybody who's holding it or bought it for that reason the value of the vouchers has dropped and you can't even use them anymore but if you buy from the team it's 18 cents if you buy from the team it's 18 cents yeah <laughs> i saw that too land hype uh oh, gather the magic you're the perfect person for land hype i am hey, not, I'm not I, I don't own any land so that's, yeah. Yeah uh foyer do you like plots as a buy going into land no nah, i'm gonna wait to actually pick up specific ones same yeah uh well you buy them with merits and most guilds can't even buy both of those yeah true steever but again if you were if you were at that level there's a couple of guilds who are at that level i just feel bad for anybody that bought that took a financial action and then got burned because the team made a, a huge pivot, right? So, regarding DEC coupon, bond idea, uh, inside discussion with McSheets, perhaps this is a weird situation because most companies don't sell things for free. The EC revenue is burned upon receipt. They always sell things for free. It's called discount. Hmm. <laughs> I would love to be a fly on the wall in this conversation between you, Brandon, and uh, Neil. <laughs> Have you spoken to Neil at all? No. No? I, I know who he is, yeah. Uh, don't feel bad for whale guilds. <laughs> I don't feel bad for... I feel bad for anybody that... It's, it's, it's the principle of it. Oh, are you saying not to feel bad for you? Oh, he said, I'm sure they are fine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you were to get into the game now, how would you split 1k between assets? Uh, well, what are you trying to do? Play yeah, yeah. What are you trying to do? Like, I would just, I would, if I, if I was trying to get into the game now with 1k, I would buy a Lux Vega and max out the rewards cards. <laughs> Lux Vega, rent, uh, max out the rewards cards and rent uh, a couple of other summoners. I would just sit and wait and buy as many gold Kalia that's under 19 bucks. Oh, there you go. And just rent them out. That's that's your play right now. Yeah. Uh, and it's not a bad play. I did I did look at it, but I'm just I'm not investing right now. Yeah. All right. Congrats to France. But, you know, like DEC D- is also a good buy too. When, uh, when it drops below the 70% of peg. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially if you buy it through Uniswap, it's a little cheaper. Um, you're talking oh on on the Ethereum chain? Yeah, yeah. Interesting. DC, okay. DC is... Yeah, but then isn't that? I mean, unless you're unless you're purchasing massive quantities, because that that fee is going to get you. Well, it's a thousand dollars. Um, the, the the fee is actually not that bad. It's gas um, fees right now. Okay. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think that depending on what you're if you're using USDC or Ethereum uh, or Dai, I think um you catch it on a good day. I think it's like uh, two bucks or something. Yeah. And another one dollar and something to transfer, depending on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Level up life's in the house. What's going on, man? Uh, we did some digging earlier to where where that where. I, so I told Level Up Life about your 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 thoughts on you know how much DEC is out there in the ecosystem. <laughs> so we the thing is we looked on on Binance Smart Chain, and I don't know if there's more in Ethereum, but at least on the Binance Smart Chain, we were able to find. I think 1.7 billion that is not currently in liquidity pools. Well, uh, I'll kind of semi uh, paraphrase CZ. It's what you can't find that wor- that should worry you. Yeah, but again, I, I feel like all that stuff's got to be on chain. No. No? All right. So, if you're saying not financial advice, just want to see what you guys would do. I mean, I, I, I'm answering this as a player, right? So, to play at the highest levels, I think it'd be cool to get all of the the rewards cards for super cheap, maybe a couple of chaos agent ones that are important, and then just go with Lux Vega and you'll be set for ever. <laughs> so 
just don't use a bot no not every bot uses uh flux as a default true true yeah. uh i'll be converting vouchers and some jlx to sps since the price is under four cents cool so after the release of lex vega you still believe in kelia it's not me it's the market so 1.7 yeah see love love life i was i was under the same impression as you um that all of this should be visible on chain so i just thought where would it be hiding for you private well, wallets the, the, beauty of, the beauty of exchange is you can create wrap and you can create synthetics and you can you know but there's no wrap dec right now is there well who knows you think somebody wrapped it who knows <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, it, this is crypto uh, the, uh, the, you know, the, the beauty of being on the blockchain and being immutable and transparent is that um you know you you have uh, a lot of mixers and a lot of uh, exchanges that do such a beautiful wonderful job of making sure that mm -hmm. it's only immutable the way you want it to be immutable yeah yeah that's the beauty of technology right they are smart uh, blockchain break it's so new it brings some of the uh the smartest people true uh, true yeah yeah it, it brings i i remember like uh, talking to one guy he's uh you know, it's someone that I don't know his exact IQ, but he's way smarter than I am. And um, just listening to him for like 10 minutes and I was like, oh, man, this is just terrible. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, listening to a, a, a someone who has like two degrees in applied mathematics from uh, one of the America's most prestigious yeah. university uh, discuss. Um, uh yeah you know like uh, algorithmic stable coin <laughs> uh, ma ma made me worry that that was the first indication that uh, if someone with um two phds from mit can't uh can't understand it uh, you know interesting yeah. i you know i i i know I, I asked you about this but it would be awesome if the team had kept track of how much dec has been printed in in total right since since the launch of the game like i feel like that's a number they oh, should have it now they're buying them yeah and i mean they're tracking it now but it's like i feel like that's a number that they should have had like historically how much dc have they printed um as as a company as a game as whatever you want to call it and then they should also be able to track how much has been burned through guilds through um potions through all that stuff one one of the um, the fun part of my job uh, from a, uh, I, I audit technology and I work with policy and procedure. I, I work with a lot of the uh, companies. And go ahead. sorry, can I, I got to take a call? Can you just keep that thought and then and then jump into the questions? I'll be back in two minutes. Yep. Yep. Sorry. Sorry about this. Yeah. So l listening to the uh, founders and their conversations. Uh, uh, I guess my dog he's uh, uh, playing around there. Uh, you, you hear their stories, and uh, part of it is uh, you, uh, you, understand, you begin to realize what they originally set out to try to achieve isn't really uh, what the end result is. It, uh, most of the time, uh, if they end up growing the business, uh, the business ends up um, doing significantly better, and uh, they actually um, see things that's completely uh, different. Let's see, how could there be DC? Uh, yeah level of life i i, I think that's uh, that's a question for uh cc i think at, uh, at binance uh i'm not 100 percent sure um i i think we we don't know definitively um but maybe through an audit um we, we can uh, we can actually um show it through the uh, the proof of reserve on on binance but potentially maybe they'll uh, they'll show all the ones that dc had moved off the wallet uh, onto uh, someone's uh, private wallet. Maybe we can look at it from um, that perspective. I think um, I, I don't have uh, c uh, control over uh, the, uh, the, sh the show here. Um, I, I don't know if you guys um, had anything uh, you guys wanted to. Well, let me see the comments uh, if I can get a hold of uh, the video here. Um, Let's see if I can. Maybe I can. Uh, let's see. Um, I don't know how to actually 
get uh, get into the actual live stream uh, comments that you guys have through uh, the whole uh, presentation here with uh, after sound. But, All right, sorry yeah. about that. Yeah, uh, no worries. I, I was trying to actually find the comments that people were uh, making beyond that. Um, oh, th there should be little comments thing. You you won't be able to put them on screen, but yeah, uh, there should be a little comment thing. But uh, I I was listening in the background. You did phenomenally. Yeah. I think you should start your own stream now. <laughs> um all right so hold on let's see lux waka rooney all the rewards cards is, is what you need max i i want to i want to try this as an experiment and have just lux vega some max dragon summoner that i rent or buy and Perfect. and just the rewards cards and see what happens because over time you'll be able to build that deck with all the the rewards cards the future rewards cards kelly's still good and affordable for many mm -hmm. What's up, Jedi Sky Knight? Good to see you here. I think I heard all the DECs on all the DEC on BSC is really in a pool on high waiting for the transfer. Uh, I, I don't know. So let me know if would, would love to read more on that. Uh, that is why there's so many big spawn lines accounts. Foyer, when the capital injection happens, what do you think the team should spend the money on first? Uh, after after they get private jets, what do you think they should spend it on? <laughs> yeah, private jets and islands. Uh, I don't... Uh... I don't think they're listening to their last town hall and I could completely uh, misinterpret it. I don't think they have any intentions of uh, spending. Uh, they're just holding it in, in case um, that uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum collapse uh, further, I should say. Yeah. Just as a contingency and an emergency fund. That's a good idea. For you, teach us about something cool. <laughs> these, these are comments from when, when I had to step away. Can you teach them about something cool in 30 seconds? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Man, you, I mean, you were doing so great being put on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you. Uh, we'll, we'll save that lesson for another time. Uh, Alex is also asking if you're going, if anything's going to happen to SBF. It's, it's interesting. I, I think his, his US business, um, FTX US, I believe it's, it's a sound structure based on what he created. And then his, um, Bohemian, uh, entity is what's in question what's and I, yeah so I, I don't know the whole uh piece and then you know his alameda um segment so, so i i think it's complicated and i i just don't know what the if we were to do a quantum air uh, assessment the, the damage and how it would i'm not sure which part of the u.s laws he violated and if international i could potentially see if there's actually but then you know you're dealing with the bahamas government right they're corrupt uh, as is i believe and, yeah. uh, so i don't think they're gonna prosecute him so I, I mean i agree with you in the sense that if he didn't violate any u.s laws then he's probably going to be safe from any kind of prosecution i think the issue is the fact that like <laughs> a lot of mainstream media New York Times, Forbes, Wall Street Journal are painting him as some kind of fallen hero when he still, at the end of the day, lost like what ten million dollars worth of funds. I, there's also these uh, comments on uh, you know he's one of the largest, the second largest donor to the Democratic Party. The yeah, Democratic I know. Party. So I, there's that narrative too, and I, I'm not sure how, how how much of that narrative is true or, or not. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, we don't we don't need to get into it here. We're not trying to get political, but I, right. I think I think the the issue is just the fact that he seems to be <laughs> he seems to be protected from high on up. <laughs> and at the end of the day, I think I personally think what he did was not very great in terms of uh, you know the using of customer funds, whether that was whether that violates U.S. laws or not, whether he'll be prosecuted or not. I don't think that that was. Uh, a good action that he took and the fact that there are i would say maybe not anymore but you know respected or at least mainstream media sources that are, are painting him in a very very generous light uh is is really disappointing for me to see because that's that just shows um i don't know i just we're going to get into a whole different topic so yeah, I, it, I, it, it just shows it just shows how bad like the the narrative is overall yeah and I, at the end of the 
day, I would encourage people to be careful with their money, where they put their money mm -hmm. and how they buy. Um, these are the reasons why even for like Binance, I don't, I don't really um, want to use it or store uh, my crypto on Binance either, even though they're the world's largest. And no. I, I don't know how, how much faith you can, uh, you can trust. Uh, put a lot of uh, trust in uh, these guys and that's why liquidity pool and all these um, or if you were to do wrap uh, tokens and mm -hmm. hypothecate it <laughs> I, I i think um short term yeah you can put some money but you're never gonna like order some magnitude multiply your your money in a way that uh, it's, I, I think if you were to let's say stake them in a game um, ecosystem like Splinterlands uh, or GLX and things like that, you can, uh, or you know, even uh, if you were, I think the Central Land is of uh, like seven, eight hundred percent, you know, ROI right now too on the staking. Yeah. Or uh, there's uh, there's definitely opportunities. I think just pick and choose them and just be careful and just try to put them in your your own personal wallet and don't hold too many tokens. Not your keys, not your coins. Um, yeah, I don't know if I go that far, but I just think that, you know, just uh, be careful where you, where you make your investment. These are your hard-earned money, and I think you um, you should yeah. take good care of them. I, I think uh, one way of looking at it is your tokens and your money, they're your employees. They work for you. So mm -hmm. you should try to uh, allocate and treat them in a, in a manner that best represents their value to you. Good advice. Um, all right, Jedi Sky Knight saying educational hang chat. Yeah, we're all learning something here. Thanks, Foyer. All right, so hello. You don't need Waka. Or Yuki's in the house. What's going on, Yuki? Yeah, I, I don't know why I said yes I to Waka. I thought everyone money. burned their Waka. Huh? I thought everyone burned their Waka. <laughs> Good morning, Ryan. What's happening? Uh, my question is who made money from the FTX debacle? <clears throat> uh, whoever that hacker was. Oh, SPF did. <laughs> uh like from what i understand now when we move dec to binance smart chain is sent to a wallet that holds it on hive yeah i, I wish i understood that more technically steve but i i don't want to make a comment that's in, uninformed but thank you for sharing that i uh, i believe that's how the team is doing it what uh steber uh 82 is uh saying is correct okay yeah all right no he took a one billion dollar personal loan I think nothing is going to happen to him. Yikes. Man, he took a $1 billion loan using his own printed token as collateral, right? Yikes. He had a lot of smart lawyers uh, and financial people yeah. advising him. Uh, I don't know his situation. In the interview, he said he didn't care which political side to give to. You gave to both sides. Yep, that's really how it runs. <laughs> But no way to access coins on Hive unless you send it back from BSC. All right, so watch Legal Eagle YouTube video. I will. Thank you. Uh, I would have lived off the dividends. He would have made over one billion per year for the rest of his life. He lost it because of greed. He donated hundreds of millions to politicians on both sides and was money laundering funds for the. Yeah, that's the when I, when I like when I put my tinfoil hat on the the money laundering with the narrative. Yeah, is is an interesting rabbit hole to go down again. Alleged. I, you know, we're not, we're not saying anything on here, but, uh, so Decentraland ice poker is cool, but the game is laggy. Have you tried that Decentraland ice poker? I, I looked at it and yeah, that, that's what I, the impression I get to. I want to, I want to do a stream here. Actually, maybe I'll, I'll do them on Twitch instead. That's why you have to go to Gankland. I gotta go to Gankland. Yeah, I want, I want to do a stream like where I, I just start exploring some other games. Um, and just kind of having fun with it. Like I said, I love Smaller Land. So, you know, for people who are people, people on, on, uh, someone on Twitter was like giving me a hard time because they're like, oh, yeah, when people want to leave Splinter Lands and explore the games, you know, that the, the bear market is close to the bottom. And I'm just like, no, I just, I just realized that I was like spending too much time here for something that doesn't bring me the joy of playing for the joy of it. <laughs> so, uh, so an really example games. is like, I, I, I um, I, I bought land in a game called League of Kingdoms, and every day you just go and collect them. They they give it. They used to give it to you and die, which was great. And what airdrops? Then, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, from from the land holdings, yeah. uh, depending on the level and uh, things like that, and you kind of have to maintain it. And, uh, but you can um, you can collect uh, every day, and you, you don't restake it. So you yeah. this is great for you for your um, uh, your ice cream. 
can. You just uh, ice cream. You just take them out if you, you know. But I have to go buy the land first, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, so if you were part of the original um, people who bought land, they uh, they were pretty um, relatively low price. If you were part of the first tranche. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, if you bought land here, it's you, you bought it for oh, like yeah, 10, 20 15, bucks. Yeah, 10, 20 bucks. That's that's a yeah. good like 10, 15 X right now. Yeah, and that's uh, I think that's that's a way to do it um, is to buy things uh, at the early tranches. You know, mm -hmm. nodes is the same way. You, you guys bought them at a good price. Uh, whether yeah. lo uh, long term, I, I think it, it'll hold uh, once it gets converted to DEC purchase. Yeah. Things like that. As Alex saying, to be honest, he's a legend pro. Y'all can be mad all you want, but if he gets away with it, that's got to be the craziest come up story ever. I mean, I, I don't know that I would ever trust anything he does again. I mean, I, I didn't have anything on FTX. I did not have an FTX account, but it's like, I, I, I've lost trust in a lot of the crypto institutions out there that just ended up being degenerate gamblers. <laughs> so what's going on, Dragon? Good to see you here. Darkest Night will figure out a lineup that makes Walker great again. <laughs> Mwaga. <laughs> Make Walker great again. <laughs> all right so it's a bear market everywhere alex is saying you should do other games what happened to the project you were working on uh you mind if i take a minute to talk about this real quick oh uh, yeah go ahead okay so uh i i'm actually in the final process of it and I'm, I'm hoping to launch it tomorrow but i i'm launching an nft project for my rooney holy auto tuna because I, I want to build it into a brand. I want to do some really cool things with it. And so I'll be doing that on Hive through NFT Showroom. You guys are getting a little preview now. But I have a post that will hopefully go up later tonight or early tomorrow. And then I'll record a video giving more details into what I want to do with Holy Auto Tuna. Uh, because that, that video, that song is just the first part of it. And just a small piece. But I, I really want to turn it into something awesome that can be kind of like this community owned and supported project. Um, so that's that's it in a nutshell. Um, that's what I want to do. And then I don't know if we want to go into it for you, but you and I have been talking about some interesting things and I, we can save it for later, but I don't know if you want to. It's uh, it's up to you. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, so let's let's put it this way because I know, I know that there is, um, there's interest for this because somebody literally reached out to me this morning. Okay. So, uh, and actually I think Alex pretty much called it. So right now there is an opportunity, of, not an opportunity, but w one of the issues is that, um, or at least been said to me is that the team doesn't listen, right? And you can agree with that or disagree with that. I think the team does a good job of taking feedback in. Um, but I think a lot of their feedback is skewed to a lot of the older players or players who have a lot of assets in the game. So, Again, the the idea would be to set up some kind of way that, uh, and, and Foya, you can probably explain this a little bit better than I can. The idea would be to set up uh, some kind of uh, system or project that would be able to gather the community's feedback together, similar to like a DAO, right? But use that as a way to influence the company's direction, right? Whether that's through the DAO essentially like buying a ton of SPS and voting the way that the community wants it to vote or whatever the case is. Um, again, a lot of it, a lot of it is still, you know, Foye and I have been talking for a while. Uh, and this isn't a project that like, I think you or you or I could do individually. But as we kind of discuss the ideas, I know one of the things would be to see who would be interested in being a part of developing that and putting it together. Um, so I figure maybe teasing it out here and, and having uh, anybody who's interested from um, anybody who's interested reach out just so we can continue the conversations on what that would look like, uh, I think would be a good idea. So I don't know if you want to give any any quick thoughts or, or highlights um, just based on, on the conversations you and I have had. I, I think one of the uh, the benefit of a community is that um, so for, for instance, uh, one of the things that I do poorly is sell, uh, sell, let's say SPS, for instance, mm -hmm. if I had a community DAO and the community DAO would have a smart contract and the smart contract would set it at certain numbers. And when, when it hits that value, it would trigger either the buy or sell uh, from it. And it, it's a collective 
decision from the community pr uh, perspective. Yeah, I think that these types of transactions would, I think, in in the long run, would be significantly better than me as an individual trying to figure out when I should buy and sell. Because at the end of the day, uh, I, I'm not as good at. Um, I, I'm probably be a better buyer I mean, than we're, seller. We're all emotional, right? So <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. So I, I think having. Uh, this is the advantage of having of like it's like giving your family member someone you trust uh, your your account and say okay i i can't sell it but i want you to sell it at when it hits this amount mm -hmm. so i i think that's one of the uh, the benefit and and it's also a collective you you pool your resources your funds and you don't have to have a lot of money you can put whatever it is and it allows you to it's it's kind of like the the bot for splex that goes to the the glx and uh, stakes it every hour some people can do it every 15 minutes or earlier and some people don't have the time but the ability to put that and but not everyone is aware that there's a tool out there that would would do something like that or people are not familiar with bots uh, so it's a way to be able to put put your money and be able to allocate and diversify uh, across a, a number of, of resources. and this doesn't have to be extended uh, within the splinterlands game itself it could be um, you know glx it could be other games too mm -hmm. it's a community vote and you assess it and you determine which one has the the most sound tokenomics and the longest um, fundamental in terms of uh, gameplay that we can we can assess and look at and the, the community can do a lot of different projects or you get to the point where you make uh, make a ton of money you can take that and just say hey we want we have an idea we want to create something and develop something and, and attach it to a splinterlands flywheel or another flywheel mm -hmm. things like that or completely outside yeah now, I, and guys, this is this is all very much just an idea and conversation phase right now. So, you know, um, I I'm in a as as I told Foyer just to be you know transparent with you guys. Like, I'm I'm in a weird like <laughs> transitional period of my life where I I just I want to build cool things. Like, I, I like the whole NFT project with Holy Auto Tuna. That to me is a way in which I can try to, and I'll, I'll explain this more in the post in the video, and then I'll be live Tuesday hopefully to talk about it once that's out. But like that's that's a way for me to bridge music and Web three in a way that hasn't like that's not fully there yet. Um, and then with something like this, you know, obviously everybody here is in invested into Splinterlands, and I'm not even talking about financially, but just emotionally, right? Like we're all we're all into the game for one reason or another. Um, and so I don't know, just the idea of building something somewhat adjacent to that, that can benefit from that, that can benefit it, right? So not just benefit from, but benefit it also uh, in many ways. And then, you know, who knows who knows where that goes? Just continue to build cool stuff with, uh, with just continue to build cool stuff. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just in that, in that phase. So I don't know what it looks like. It might be pie in the sky for many people who are hearing this right now, but you know, it's, it's just ideas being talked about and hopefully, uh, hopefully what we can do is solidify something that will be a starting point for where this goes yeah the great and, and thing take is, first step. sorry it's a ahead. community it's yeah. a community initiative exactly so <clears throat> all right sounds like a pyramid scheme i see flow got us already <laughs> <laughs> that, um, that means we can count on ic flow yeah we can count on ic flow uh grana what's going on good to have you here you should play your holy auto tuna music video <laughs> Yeah, well, we're, I, I, I have a lot of fun ideas for Holy Auto Tuna. So, you know, I just, I want to create something cool with that. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Good for you. I appreciate it, man. Uh, let's see. Holy Auto Tuna White Album. <laughs> I heard Taylor Swift's team is trying to have it blocked in fear of, oh, dropping. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had to call her reps up. So for you to be the CTO, I, we're not even talking about that. I don't know. You want to be CTO? No, I, I would make a bad uh, CTO. <laughs> <laughs> I, again, just just to be fully transparent with you guys, a lot of this, and, and for you, you can expand upon it too. A lot of this is just conversation right now. A lot of this is just like, okay, there's there's a, it's not even an opportunity, but there's just like a void in the market for something that could really bring the community together. Like one of the things Foyer said to me, which has got me thinking, is um, why why hasn't the community come together? to talk about buying out the rest of chaos agent like 
what could we force the team to do in terms of giving us a better deal if the entire community came together with not not all these different pools but the entire community came together said and we're gonna we're gonna stick it to you we're gonna buy chaos legion but what's the best thing that you can offer right but we're gonna buy it out by the end of the year or something like that if we can pull together the resources and i think that's tough to do with a you know a fractured community but i don't know there's there's some opportunity there in the future what do you think for you yeah, definitely. I, I don't think the deep discounts should be given solely to the biggest guilds or the biggest group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know YGG is getting some kind of special discount, right? So, you know, it'd be it'd be something like that. It's like, OK, well, YGG is the only one right now. And this isn't like a, we're trying to build a competitor to YGG. This is a, OK, this is how do we how do we get everybody on the same page and on the same side? So everybody in the community for like for example with this sale would be able to benefit and it's not just for the the whales or the or the largest pools i believe there's a number of groups that are getting the champion offer probably yeah yeah so creating a trust designing and deploying a smart contract as trustee with directions set via vote of stakeholders smart contracts taking some lawyer and accountant jobs true at the at the low end I believe the uh, the smart accountants and smart lawyers will uh, will always uh, there's always the creative uh, part of the job, mm -hmm. but in terms of litigation and following through and contract laws and things like that, it, it'll as you standardize and get people. But large companies they hardly ever agree to the standard. <laughs> yeah, true, true, true. All right, so Drake said we all look cool stuff, either making or enjoying it. Yeah. Can never have enough cool stuff. So Icy Flow is going to do a 51% attack on the Dow, and with all that power, is going to make me do a death metal song for, <laughs> for the Rooney. <laughs> all right. So, I mean, maybe, I mean, well, okay, I'll, I'll talk about this this more in uh, in the other video. So, Nicola's saying, why would community buy that thing and award the team while team did nothing to community in the past year? Uh, I wouldn't say that it's necessarily awarding the team because we're, we're kind of pressuring them for further discounts um, by doing what they want, right? It's just it's a it's a give and take, and I would I would bet you based on the sales that we're seeing or probably going to see that people still want to have cast legion packs, right? So they would rather own them than not own them, and if they can get them for cheaper than everybody else or at the cheapest possible price, I, I would say that there's a lot of people in the community, myself included, that would be in there. Yeah. So I, Dragon's going to pitch it with Icy Flow AI making great death metal these days. AI created death metal is on Spotify. Let's go. <laughs> uh, New Age, let me know if you need any HPRC delegation for your project. Oh, appreciate it, New Age. Um, yeah, there'll, there'll be more info. I, I just I want to tease out here. I also want to say that no matter like these other projects, whatever I'm going to launch tomorrow, whatever, you know, Foyer and I uh, potentially work on in the future, nothing's going to change this channel right so i'll still be here covering content i just i don't know i just i'm in a, i'm in a building mode right now um i know do you have to go yeah, or, i have a few minutes yeah okay uh because i want to i want to do i want to do a giveaway since we said we're going to do a giveaway i don't know if you have enough oh, time yeah. to stick around for for a <laughs> death wheel because here's the thing and feel free if you, if you got to run don't worry about it but we'll, we'll go ahead and start closing out the stream with this um let me go ahead and share my screen. You can answer this for state of survival. Oh, what is on? Oh, do I want to show notifications? Sure. Why not? I imagine the DZ will fluctuate and it'll, it'll continue to fluctuate until the team decides to put more effort into defending the peg. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, just enjoy the arbitrage. Agreed. Um, all right, guys. So a quick update on the Aftersound YT account. This thing is playing in bronze and silver now, and the rewards have not really been that great. In fact, I want to share this with you guys. I appreciate what everybody is is delegating to, to it, but I just want to be honest with you that like you can see the rewards have been absolute trash over the past week. Here's here's the end of season rewards. Right, We got 15 silver chests, and that was worth six cents of value. Um, I, I, I'm not saying that I want to stop this. I just I just feel like 
<laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to do with it quite yet because the rewards, you know, what assets in this account don't really have much value. And I, I don't want to be just giving out random like common cards at one BCX or even like, you know, so if you're, if you're delegating cards to, let me put it this way. If you're delegating cards to the uh, account, I appreciate it. There's no requirement. Um, I just need to figure out a better way to do this. And maybe that'll be like an investment on my side to, to actually buy up cards that can farm more resources on this account. The only problem is that with soul bound cards coming in, uh, it's, it's going to be, I don't know. It's going to be tough. I don't know if, if you have any ideas. On Why don't you throw there. a Rooney and see you, uh, not, not a Rooney, a Lux and see what, see what you that's, get. That's what I was thinking. I think what, what I can do is either delegate my Lux or rent a Lux for, for this account and, uh, maybe, maybe put in some, uh, higher level, like rewards cards that I have just sitting around that aren't earning uh, a bunch. But so what we're going to do is a death wheel that has, that'll have two prizes at the end. So whoever's second to last doesn't have to feel like they're not going to get anything, but uh, this account has earned what hundred something SPS. So second to last place is going to get a hundred SPS. We'll save, uh, we'll save some for later, uh, for a future giveaway. And, uh, the winner, which will be my account because here, but the winner will get uh 20,000 DEC. So we'll go, we'll go for some, some bigger rewards here than just handing out smaller, smaller cards. Sound good. All you have to do is be here. So let me set up. Oh, I need to open up the wheel and names. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to uh, head out. So Tales from the uh, Man, sir. what's going on? Yeah. Good, good luck. You got to bounce? Uh, okay. Everyone. Yep. Well, I appreciate uh, the... All right. Appreciate you. Yeah. No, thanks. Thanks for coming by. Um, uh, we'll, we'll be wrapping up right after this, but uh, appreciate you spending your Sunday morning with us. Always learn a lot. Sounds good. Uh, yep. Enjoy and All good right. luck to uh, those on the wheel. <laughs> All right. See ya. Bye. All right. Take care. Bye. All right. Now you guys are stuck with just me. Um, All right. So we got the wheel ready to go. Yeah, I know everybody. Okay. So I'm not gonna be able to catch up with chat, but that's fine. Go ahead and everybody throw in your uh chat right now or sorry throw in a comment into the chat i'm sorry if you commented i will not be able to catch up and go back for all these but uh if you've not commented in a while i'm gonna pull in as i usually do all of the participants in this chat uh, and i believe that is pulled in from you guys talking or commenting So let me see here. All right, this is a this is a, a bigger wheel than usual. So I want to make sure that we have everybody in here. And you know, so go go ahead, get your get your uh, alt YouTube accounts. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Come on, don't do that. If I just gave you that idea. So we're gonna we're gonna have to go with the honor system here. All right, so all right, so I think we've given people enough time. Let me go ahead and get the participants in. I'm just gonna copy and paste this list, which I'm curious to know how many there will be. All right, we have 69 entries. <clears throat> no, but that that counts the that counts this. Okay, guys, I want can I expand this at all? Can you read if your name is on there? Okay, so I'm going to go through this and I'm going to try my best to get people who did not get in. But if you are not included on here, send me a comment or, or post a comment. If, if you guys can hold your comments right now, just so it's easier for me to keep up with, um, hold your comments. And if you don't see your name on here, I'm going to go through and read them all. Okay. And hopefully I, I'm going to need to find a better solution for this, but, uh, we'll, we'll get there. So Alex Toro, Altrix, Andrew Johnston, Battle Beast, Brandon H, Brian Wu, Butters323, 
Clevin S, Da P, Dennis Pavlov, Frags Mania, Gathering the Magic, Guarana, Harris Ochoa, Icy Flow, Jedi Sky Knight, Joseph Naveno Soriano, KJ Elzor, Luke Noak Alum, Michael Hartel, Mr. Best, <coughs> excuse me, Nicola, uh, I'm not going to pronounce that poorly, but last name begins with a C, Oscu, Pedro Frances, or Fernandez, Pets and Stuff, PG, Pete Guts, Gutsmer, Ricardo Bastos, State of Survival, Stever, Stock Jockey, Tails, The Chuni, Victor Ontiveros, Wilson, and Virus. All right, so if you're not on there, let me know. Again, this this was said, and it's it's in alphabetical order. And I don't know how many people are here, but are you sure you want to switch to advanced mode? Yeah, let's try that. But there's like there's only like 50 people in the chat, so uh, I'd like to think that we got a good amount. But I just don't want anybody to feel left out, you know. But what I'm going to do is remove all of the blanks from here so we can get an accurate count. Yeah, I know Alex is trolling me right now, but I did not see anybody say that they were not in. So that's good. Okay, we have 36 out of like the 52 people that are currently here. Um, I really don't want to read the names again, but I will show them to you just in case. All right, fine. I didn't hear a Aaron. I don't see an a Aaron, but see Bobby. I don't see you on here, Bobby. So see, I'm going to add Bobby Blankenship. Blankenship. Uh, I'm not, but I just came back. All right. Fair enough. You came back at a good time. I just added you back on. All right. I think we've, oh, bad day gaming. Thank you for letting me know. Bad day gaming. Gaming, cool. Uh, awesome. Anybody else? One more? Should we do one more? Five, four, three, two, one. All right. No other comments. All right. So, congrats, not congrats, but good luck to the 38 people. Uh, who are in this again the rewards are second place on this death wheel and again this is a death wheel so if you're if your name is called before the last two people you earn nothing uh, but the last two people second to last is going to get a uh, 100 sps and the last person is going to get 20,000 dec cool all right here we go let's get started Uh, let's go back to StreamYard. Whoa, dude, I, I, I apologize. I don't know how to say your name, but thank you for, <laughs> thank you for the, the kindness and generosity. Any opinion about SPS token? I will get into that in a moment. All right. PG, you're the first one gone. Let's go ahead and spin these, but to, to answer your question, actually, I can answer it while we're we're getting rid of this. So, how do you think short term about SPS future? Any opinion about SPS token? Um, I'm sorry, Asku, not today. I'm actually a little bearish on SPS short term. I think I outlined this in a video a while back, but now that it is part of the rewards for all LPs, including DEC, there's going to be a lot of sell pressure for people that want to um, that, that want to compound their earn. If I'm earning in SPS to get it onto BSC or however, whatever, I need to sell half of the rewards and then compound that. And then for DEC pools, I need to sell all of the SPS and put it in there. So I think that there's a lot of sell pressure on SPS and there's just, there's no utility or use case because they're trying to put that over to DEC, but DEC is struggling right now as it's below peg. All right, Mr. Best, so sorry, but you are gone. 17 miles? What do you mean by 17 miles? Gathering the magic. Sorry, my friend. No. <laughs> Damn, I got it wrong. Second to last. Oh yeah, you should have you should have coded it better here. 
I see flow. Oh, oh. So, so sorry, dude. I'm gonna get the death wheel. So yes, the death wheel is the last people left are gonna earn something. Oh man, so everybody that I know. Oh, sorry, virus. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. My internet, my internet is not. Brian Wu. Right. Dude, holy crap. Uh, I don't even know what to say. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, the support means a lot, especially right now. So um, I'm, I'm, none of this is financial advice. I, this is just how I feel about the SPS token. So I, I hope it's helpful for you. I, I personally don't think it was worth whatever you donated, but I, I appreciate you more than you know. Thank you so much for that. Uh, we'll continue the we'll continue the death wheel and we'll roll this into uh, more giveaways for the future. That's for sure. Wow. And can you tell me how to say your name? Uh, I I can't I can't read it. Or is it just seventeen miles? Oh, that's what you said. Seventeen miles. All right. Seventeen miles is your name. Thank you. Seventeen miles. Now that makes sense. All right. Let's get back to the death wheel. You guys ready? Appreciate you very much, 17 Miles. Also pretty cool name. All right, Harris Ochoa. So sorry. After sound that ain't ice cream money. That's after sounds. Yeah, we'll we'll get there. It's it's a fun idea, guys. I, I don't I'll be I'll be very honest with you. You know, I I love the idea. Sorry, butter. But I, don't get <laughs> I still have a lot of reservations about it, but I think it's I think it's a cool idea. My reservations are in the only way to do something like this, like a DAO, is by launching into token. You know how I feel, so I, I want to make sure that like you know the goal the goal isn't to like mint something and have a bunch of it go towards like a core team or have a bunch of it like to raise funds. Like the idea would just be to do something that the community can all have like some kind of equal ownership in. Like that's that's what I want, right? That's what I really, really want. How that's designed, I don't know because I, I don't have the technical uh, skills, but I feel like I'm learning a lot and I would like to, you know, work with a bunch of really, really smart people to make something like that happen. That the community, especially the community here, um, I mean, all of you guys choosing to spend your time with me, it's amazing. I would love for us to have like a, a stronger power within uh, a stronger power and influence within the overall Splinterlands ecosystem. If we can all come together in a way that is based on something that's trustless and, you know, I don't know that I necessarily want to call it democratic, but done through some kind of like DAO vote. I don't know. That to me just sounds like a cool idea. It's just a matter of the design being something that that vibes with me overall and like what I'm about, which is not, you know, printing stuff for nothing um, and uh, an execution, right? So if the design is good and we can actually execute on something like that, I, th I think it'd be a really cool project to work on. So the reason that that we're mentioning it is because he and I have been talking actually since the first time he was ever on the show about putting something like this together. And it's like, okay, I think we have a cool idea of what we would want to do. Um, now it's just a matter of putting that out to the community and seeing who would want to be involved, not from a, like a, you know, participation standpoint where it's like, you know, the idea will be like, anybody will be able to get in, in terms of like participating in the DAO, but actually being part of like a core team that designs this and figures it out. So if that's you, if you have some kind of technical skills or understanding of the space, I mean, a lot of it is just conversations right now, but the more, the more, the merrier. Um, obviously there, obviously there's a point that we can get to where there's too many cooks in the kitchen, but it's just foyer and I right now. <laughs> so, uh, Joseph, so sorry for, for kicking you out. You thought Korea was metric system. Pretty sure they are. Um, Pedro Fernandez. So sorry. All right. Hey, what's up? Hello. Hello. Michael Hartel. All right, man. man. Uh, what do you do with Boye? Uh, just, just rewind it or wait until we have a little bit more. I mean, the, the idea is just 
to set up some kind of community fund. Oh, I didn't get rid of this blank. Right, we got oh, I think it's lagging again. Sorry, guys. Clevin. The wheel is cancer to your Wi-Fi. You know what? That's right. I didn't have any issues until we pulled up the wheel. The wheel? I don't know if the wheel just takes up a bunch of, like, power or computing process? Processing power? But it's usually slow for me, too, just pulling up this website. I'll have to find something better. Luke! So sorry, man. Only when the wheel spins. That's so... Maybe it'll be better when we get less people on the wheel. I don't know. <laughs> Fragsmania! Sorry, dude. Uh, probably. Probably. I'm using I'm using a busted up old laptop for the stream, so I'll have to level up my I'll have to level up my my settings soon. Or my my, my setup soon. Tail this will be down to the final twenty. Oh Gora. All right, three to go. I got 18 more losers. Oh, all tricks. So, so sorry. There's the right type of yeah, guys. When I tell you that I'm not technical, I mean, I, you know what's funny is I actually have installed my own RAM before on my on my uh Judy. Sorry, man. The wheel caught me out on its sabotage. Yeah. Don't don't speak ill of the wheel, otherwise it's gonna it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna pick you. <laughs> Battle be sorry. We got we got a solid crowd still here. I recognize some of these names. Oh Bobby. Oh Bobby. Sorry, Bobby. Ricardo, oh, just by the slimmest of margins. Sorry, Ricardo. We'll see you later. Right down to the final fifteen. You know, I can tell whenever there's issues because the music that we're all listening to starts getting super choppy. So, I apologize, guys. Whether it's my computer or my internet, uh, it's on me, and I apologize for a poor experience. But hopefully, we'll get through it together. Dip. P is gone. Sorry. Rest of your day is awesome. Jedi Sky Knight. Today is not your night. Oh. <laughs> Brandon just got you. 10 people to kick off the wheel. Stock jockey. Oh my god. Look at how close these are. This is insane. Alright, nine more people kick. Let's push this all the way down. Alex Toro. Now you you still have ten folks remaining, two winners, eight more to be kicked off. Victor Ontivero, sorry it's not your day. List or at least I, I I shouldn't say no. Uh, people that I, I I guess I talk to regularly, or who come through regularly that I recognize their names, such as State of Survival. Sorry. State of survival. You made it to the, the single. Hey, so close. Thanks for the opportunity. Oh, there, there'll be more. There'll be more, guys. So we will continue this in the future. All right. Andrew Johnson is going to say bye to. Thanks for Andrew. And Wilson is gone. All right. So all the people that I, I know <laughs> or talk to regularly are. Leaving. You want Steve to win? 
Well, he's going to survive to the next round at least. Nicola is gone. Sorry, Nicola. Final life. Okay. Naming Dennis Pavlov, uh, KJ, KJ Zor, pa Pets and Stuff, and Stever. Keep in mind, 40% of the people here, two out of the five, will win something. Um, so let's see. Final five. Final five. I love the Death Wheel. The Death Wheel is really fun. Bad day gaming. Looks like it is a bad day for, for you. So sorry. All right. 50 50 chance now. People are rooting for you, Steve. Let's see how the bot feels. Oh, <laughs> did I jinx you or did Luke jinx you? <laughs> All right. Steve, you almost made it. I'm going to be pill this one because whoever gets spun on this next one will not make uh will not earn anything today but good luck status Bravo, we could make tournaments with people in this channel i would love to do that i, I want to do more stuff with tournaments next year guys so that that is part of the plan sorry pets and stuff all right so the good news for dennis pavlov can you both post your ign's in the comment section now and keep in mind i'm going to spin this and whoever it lands on is second place not first place so go ahead and post your ign's now whoever it lands on is going to earn 100 sps whoever it does not land on is going to earn twenty thousand dec cool best of luck here we go oh 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 man <laughs> that was actually pretty close all right dennis and Okay, Jelzer, thank you so much for posting. So who gets the 100 SPS? That's that's Dennis, right? Let me send that to you now from this account. So 100 SPS going over to, I hope I put this right. So D-E-N-V-I-C, congratulations. And then the 20, th oh, you know, I can, I'm logged into my main account on my main computer here. So 20,000 SPS. Oh, you know what? Never mind. This computer is not doing well with the internet. All right. Oh, Ender's Dash Game. I was just talking about that with uh, Walking Keys the other day. Great book. Um. Uh... All right, give me one second here because I, I want to do this while we're actually on stream. But let me close close out the wheel so hopefully my internet gets better. And then log out of here. Log into my main account. Which is where I will send you. Here we go. Uh, I'm just happy the other Alex didn't win. <laughs> I think I think the other Alex isn't even here now because he didn't he didn't tell me anything or put his name in there. So twenty thousand DEC uh, to what is it? K. Oh wait, I took a photo of it. Oh, Ender's game. Ender's dash game. All right, congrats to both of the winners. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to find a way to get better rewards from from the the after sound yt account but uh you know we'll get there for now and just just wanted to do so here probably we'll probably do more death wheels in the future just because i think they're fun uh but we shall see all right is the internet better now because even luthien's giving me a hard time about it i'm sorry guys i, I don't know what to do I, is it my internet or could it be my computer this super old computer i don't know but not bad to be in the top four. I didn't really want to win. That's a lie. I always want to win. <laughs> so I win the same day that my father dies. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, well, my, my condolences to your family and I, I hope, uh, hope everything is, is, uh, is going to be okay for you, man. Uh, it's probably the computer, but we will blame the internet. It's probably a little bit of both. It's actually processing where I'm running death wheel at StreamYard. Yeah, probably Brandon. That's, uh, I'll just have to get a new laptop soon, I guess. I got, dude, I got this laptop. I bought it from 
uh, Amazon for like 120 bucks. It's like a refurbished old HP laptop that was never meant to be used for anything serious. I just wanted to have like a Windows laptop because I, I primarily work on Mac for all my music stuff, but I just wanted to have a Windows laptop. And then all of a sudden this becomes my most used thing for, for streaming like three times a week. And, and, and I use it to record the videos too with its crappy, <laughs> crappy webcam. So it is what it is. Uh, probably my internet. It was the wheel. Yeah. The wheel. Well, maybe we can find a better wheel or thing in the future. Uh, Alex, I do not use Pro Tools. I learned on Pro Tools, but I uh, I use Logic Pro and Ableton Live. So, hundred twenty dollar laptop. Yeah, it's your computer. Yeah, no, this this thing is a piece of garbage, but it's it's crazy the amount of value that it's given me in terms of just doing everything that I needed it to do. Um, yeah. So what good giveaways are you looking for and send to after some YT? Uh, well, no. So after some YT was supposed to be like a farming account where like anybody could send their extra cards and, uh, or sorry, delegate their extra cards, not send, but it's like, you know, I, I bought the Archmage bot over there. So it's, it's earning and slowly, you know, leveling up. But the problem is that it's, it plays, it can get up to silver, but when it's in silver, we don't even have maxed bronze cards. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's a matter of like having higher level cards there so that the bot can farm rewards at higher levels. But I'll be honest with you. I don't know what the future for it looks like considering that we're going to get soulbound rewards cards at some point too. So sure, it can farm SPS, uh, but there'll probably be, and, and it might win some packs here and there if we can get it to the higher levels. But I wonder, I don't know. I just wonder if there'll be better ways to like <laughs> farm rewards or do stuff for the community. So we'll see. But I, I don't want to give up on the account just yet. I'm not saying to to give up on it. I'm just saying it's we'll have we'll have to navigate some tricky things. Yeah, so delegate some cards. Yeah, yeah. So this is just supposed to be like if you had extra cards, again, initially we started this account a couple months back before a lot of the anti-bot initiatives uh were implemented. So, you know, it, it ended up being that it could earn a lot of rewards uh, earlier, where it would jump up to you know high silver or gold, and uh, it wouldn't be dinged for you know low card level or all the other stuff that they put in. So plays, uh, we actually have it play wild because um, some people had delegated some older cards. So Alex, my boy went to full sale. This fancy music. Oh yeah, I've heard of full sale. For music production, all they did was teach in Pro Tools. I mean, so Pro Tools is industry standard. Um, and that's like when I, when I took a course on production and uh, not at Full Sail, but in Chicago. And I, I learned on I learned on Pro Tools. I just I just don't like it, though. Uh, I find Logic Pro, which is Apple's software. Um, I just find that that works great for pretty much everything that I want when I'm recording stuff. So if I'm like recording guitar, vocals, and then mixing, it's it's great for two. But uh, if you're familiar with Ableton Live, Ableton Live was initially for DJs. And I love it because it's so, it's such a creatively free and intuitive um, software that I just started using it all the time. And then I, I told myself, I'm like, all right, well, if I'm gonna be using it all the time to create, I should learn how to mix here so that I'm not sending files back and forth but ultimately it ended up sucking because i don't like recording stuff in in ableton live um so it's like i'll i'll produce something in ableton live and then i'll like mix down an instrumental of it and then record the vocals in logic because that's still the best place for me and then i'll send the vocals raw files back to ableton live and finish mixing there so i guess i could do it the other way around it's really really terrible and not a good workflow but that's just how i operate Ever used Audacity? Like once or twice. It's the free free software, right? I mean, it, it can get the job done, but it doesn't have all the, the bells and whistles. I would say a better free version is GarageBand. I'm surprised at actually how powerful GarageBand is uh, if you own like a, a MacBook. Actually, if you need anything on the design side for the upcoming project, let me know. I appreciate that, Vilson. Uh, again, I, I don't know what this looks like, but this is the first time Foy and I talked about it publicly. Um, because a lot of it is just me wrapping my head around if I even want to be involved with something like this. Like for for him, and I don't mean to speak for him, so I apologize if it comes off the wrong way. But like he's he said this previously, right? He looks at Splinterlands as a web 
2.5 project, which is cool because they have some like Web3 elements and DeFi elements and crypto elements, but elements, but ultimately it's still a Web 2.5 project. So for him, setting up the DAO isn't necessarily what he wants to do. What he's interested in is creating a project that is truly decentralized from the beginning, that is truly Web3. And that is appealing to me, right? And then we kind of talked back and forth about, you know, where there were some opportunities or voids within within the ecosystem. And, you know, funnily enough, I literally just had somebody reach out to me, cold, cold message on Discord. I don't know who this person is and I'm not going to out them, but it's like, reached out to me and they said, you know, we I don't feel like the community or the, the team really listens to the community. Um, it would be great if we had some kind of union and launch our own token and we could all vote together as a community to like push things within the, you know, things within uh, what's happening in Splinterlands. And I was just like, oh, that sounds exactly like what, <laughs> what Foye and I are talking about. So it, as soon as like that came in this morning, I messaged Foye and I was like, this is so funny because, you know, if we were ever worried about interest, like there are people who are thinking about this too. So maybe this is something worthwhile to put together, not as a after sound project or after sound DAO, not as a foyer DAO, but as like, I don't know, let's find a bunch of people who can like make this together. Obviously you'll need like some kind of core team, but um, you know, make this so that it is fully web three from the start. And anybody who wants to participate in it um, can get in it from the beginning. And there's no like, again, I don't know what this looks like. I don't want to make any promises. Um, I think there's still a lot of conversations to be had, but I don't know. I'm in I'm in a very building mood right now, and it sounds it sounds like there's a cool opportunity here. Now that we know that Splinterlands will hopefully be around for the long term, you know, despite the difficulties that they've had lately, it'd be cool to build something within the DeFi space that focus on Splinterlands first, but could obviously scale up to uh, include a lot of other games or projects, not even games, or I mean. Uh, and I'll talk about this more like later, but like, I would love to launch a game at some point. I think that'd be really cool. And I don't know what that looks like because again, I'm, I'm telling you guys, I, I, I am a Bitcoin maxi in many ways. So, so this whole idea of like play to earn is like really weird to me, but I want to find a way to do it so that it's not, it's not like exploitable. It's not just printing stuff out of thin air. Uh, it has some merit to it and it's fun. Right. So I, I don't know what that looks like. I don't know if even though if I have the capability to do something like that. A lot of this is just daydreaming right now, but it's it's daydreaming, hopefully with with others who can as a, you know, some of some is greater than the uh, the, the parts, um, maybe bring something cool together to uh, the ecosystem within, you know, 2023. Uh, all right, so never use Audacity. They have, there they have copies of all the files that go through all the sound files, everything, which is, oh, really? Uh, thank you for letting me know. Uh, I've never used it for anything like serious, but yeah, it's a free software. So I don't know, Pro Tools is an industry standard. Doesn't not using it work against you, like for collabs, working with sounds? No, because at the end of the day, you can bounce down uh, raw sound files. And then it's just like, all right, if I give somebody the raw sound file of like, my my vocals or a piano or something they can just take that pull that in right so that's that's how that's how stuff like gets traded back and forth but you don't need to know it i'm a recent land buyer and just put 4k sps into my meta today nice welcome to the land club and then i saw a person i just know a little bit fair enough right, i'm okay with the game and still looking to advance both of my accounts it doesn't have to be perfect for me to make it work, I can run out the rough times. Yeah, and you know, I still think that there's some rough times ahead, but uh, overall, I'm I'm still feeling really positive about Splinterlands. I don't want anybody to take the wrong idea here. Like, I just I just think that there's a lot of headwind still, both internally within the gaming company and then externally with the the markets. But I believe, not financial advice, but I believe that the markets will eventually capitulate and turn around. I just, my time preference for that is, you know, 18 months to two years uh, when the Bitcoin halving happens. And so when I see the team taking action to ensure that they'll be around for three plus years, if they can, to me, that signals like, okay, well, they're being very conservative and making sure that they can keep the lights on for three years, which kind of is in line with where, um, you know, I'm hoping that the market will turn around. Not that we'll have a bull run, but at least it won't just feel like companies are collapsing left and right. So that's that's my hope. I'm bullish long-term, bearish short-term, and only in the sense that like, it's not even bearish. It's just, 
I think things are going to be boring for a while. The holidays are coming up. The team is going to reassess and reevaluate, come up with a new roadmap with better dates. Um, and that's all going to take some time, right? That's all going to take some time for them to actually implement. They can talk about guild alliances. They can talk about land phase one. They can talk about land phase two all they want, but I don't, it doesn't seem like we're anywhere close to that. So if you can be patient, then that's cool. If you show up every day or bot your account, that's cool. Right. But, uh, you know, it's still fun to chat about and I'll still be here doing content and, and chatting live with you guys, but, um, you know, maybe we'll cover some other games. Maybe we'll fill up the time with some other things, especially over the holidays, because there's not going to, there probably won't be any town halls. There's not going to be any major releases or updates. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll find other ways to entertain ourselves. I'll, I'll wear my Santa hat on these streams, <laughs> maybe starting next week or so. Um, but that's, that's really all I got for you guys today. We are on for two and a half hours. Uh, that project seems interesting. Pity I know nothing of, of Web3 as a dev. Otherwise, it might be interesting. Otherwise, it might be interested. Yeah, I mean, Anna, I mean, I, I don't know. If, I'm, I'm not a developer either, so I don't even know what my role in this would be. But I'm just, I'm trying to be the the corraler, or at least the person that uh, has some kind of community or network that we can start tapping into. And again, I, I don't need to be the person that brings this together. I just, or I don't need to be the person that like designs all this, but um, I really wanted to be community based, so we'll see how it happens. Dennis, I hope for Rooney to appear in game finally. God, I really hope so too. I think there's two things they need to stick the landing for before the end of next year or before the end of this year. Um, I think Rooney needs to get into game. Uh, and I think Rooney needs to get into game. And while I don't think we need it, I think that for the team, for their own kind of like self satisfaction, they need to get land 0.5 out. So we have two release. Uh, windows, maintenance windows left. There's this Tuesday and uh, the following Tuesday, December 13th. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see if they can get both of those things out over these next, you know, 10 days or so. But otherwise, congrats again to the winners for the death wheel. We'll try to do more of those types of giveaways in the future. Thank you again to 17 miles. If you're still around for the generosity and thank you guys, all of you individually who have uh, stuck around and just, choose to spend your time with me. Um, that is appreciated more than you know. Uh, I started streaming on this channel and creating content because I wanted to find more people to talk about the game with and nerd out. And uh, I feel like it doesn't matter what the metrics are. I don't, I don't care about the number of subscribers. I don't care about the number of whatever. Just the fact that there's people to talk to that are smarter than me, that are interesting and, and present really cool perspectives and ideas. Um, I love that. So appreciate you guys for being here. Thanks for spending your time. I hope you have an amazing rest of your weekend. I will be live on Tuesday. That is the plan for now. And uh, in between then, keep an eye out. I will be making a post on Peak D as well as uh, doing a video to kind of go into a little more detail about the Holy Auto Tuna NFT project, which is different than what I'm doing with Foya. He's he's helped me kind of just guide me on that. But um, the Holy Auto Tuna thing is, is my taking of... All my interests, music, Web3, crypto, Splinterlands, and, and trying to tie them into something that's that's really cool and can give back to the community. But take care, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. I will catch up with you all later. Peace.